Walking the Black Love Matters, where this service a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. And find her in a Brock and Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Or this episode, we're going to go with Jewel Santana and Kim Bella Vanderhee. Y'all, I don't want to hear no back talk because on Black Love Matters podcast, black love is black, back, black love. Good, bad, or ugly. So they've been together. Um, together, they have two, two children, a son named Jules. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also a daughter named Samantha and another daughter named Bella. Um, Santana also has a son from a previous marriage. Um, his name is Laron. <sighs> On November 23rd, 2018, what, Monday? Last week? Yeah. Yeah. Santana proposed to Cambella during the Diplomat show at the Apollo Theater. Congratulations on their love. Did he hear me on the podcast when I said, why ain't you been married that woman? I don't know. Maybe. You about, to, you about to go do a nice, clean bid? Maybe. Then on the flip side, some of my friends are like, why should she even be with him? I said, well, she done did this 10 years of time. <laughs> Already. Why not? Is this her time to leave? Do you think she's supposed to leave? Oh, this is supposed to be the love highlighting. I'm glad she stood next to him. <laughs> That's your question to ask. What? As a woman. Should she say? Or yeah. Leave? Should she say or should she go? I mean, it's a little different because I'm assuming he has a couple more coins than most niggas would. Mm-hmm. I think the average nigga, we can give each other space. Okay. And like we can create something where you see your children. I'll see your mama, right? We'll see about that. But I don't know if I'm necessarily going to stay with you for why you in jail. And you're not married, right? If you're mm-hmm. already married, I think that's different, right? You made the commitment. You know, you ride or die, you see how that go, right? But he ain't that he he wasn't married to her, Mm-mm. right? So he made his choice. He showed what was important. But now that he's married, now. Well, they're not married. They just engaged. Well, they engaged now. Oh, and they let him out the house. He was at the Apollo. Yeah. Oh, so he not on house arrest no more. No. Or he got nigga, permission. That nigga still on house arrest. They got permission because they say you're gonna play some restitution. <laughs> so go ahead and make some money. <laughs> Isn't it a certain? What now? No. What? The way house arrest work. I'm just thinking about when my brother had house arrest. Oh, your brother was on house arrest? Yes. Okay, don't tell him for what. He didn't have a teller. He didn't have a a a, a, a ankle bracelet. He had a, a his a house arrest looked like a, a watch. What? Oh my god. On his wrist. To make it more social acceptable. Yes. Okay. And he was able to lead a house um I think it was like 3 or 4 hours out the day. Oh, so he got like outside time. Yeah. Like recess. Yes. Okay. So he was able to leave the house about, you know, three or four hours so a day. Three, four hours of recess. But he had to like call and say, I'm leaving. And then call when he come back in. Oh, so you saying, um, Jules, he, this is his um, recess. And Maybe. He just do a show. I know also sometimes when your profession, right, calls mm-hmm. for you to leave the house, you have permission to go to work and nowhere else too. So maybe he yeah. considered his work. Um, I think we're getting off track. Shout out to Jules and Kim Bella Love. Like, I don't know. Like, Kim Bella is the Kate of this show. Y'all know Kate from This Is Us? Because Kate be getting on my nerves sometimes because she be creating shit that don't exist, uh-huh. issues that don't exist. Kim Bella created, I guess just, it do exist. She created this, right? Like, I feel like Kim Bella been saying the same shit since Love and Hip Hop Volume 1. Right, but back then she was like, I've been with him for four hard long years, and he still do this. He still do this. Uh-huh. Next season, I've been with him for six long years, and he been <laughs> do this. On the next season, I've been with him for ten. God damn. Well, you like it, Kim. <laughs> you like it. I don't want to hear that storyline no more, Kim Bella. But that's just me personally as a woman. Oh, okay. Anyway, who is you? I'm Nero. And I'm Naomi. And this is episode 202. Hey, happy Friday. Happy Friday, y'all. Be sure to leave a one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and mm-hmm. follow us on all forms of social media. Yeah. On Black Love Matters. That's mm-hmm. black with no K. Yeah. Yeah, chicken? Yes. Why ain't y'all black women tell me about the leave out game, right? So y'all know I got my weave. It's sickening. It isn't. It haven't moved an inch. When mm-hmm. I tell you my foundation of my weave is so legit and the hair is so good, right? But my hair probably been out for, what, three, four weeks? And my little hair starting to revert a little bit. <laughs> and when we went to trap karaoke, I was sweating. So it helped. So I'm like, oh, okay. It's finally getting to the point where I'm like, oh, it's a little frizzy. Let me let me throw a little piece of heat on it, right? You know, because I don't, ain't trying to get too much heat damage. But, you know, I can I can bump it. 
Mm -hmm. the black folks i can bump at least once a week keep it straight because i wear it real simple i just wear it in a bob straight i wrap it every night so i maintain well i bumped it i said oh no this still ain't getting it honey <laughs> so much where i was like oh i can't go outside like this so i did a little um wrap a little turban on top of my head uh -huh. with my hair cute out and then so i went to what the the um po man's college youtube Okay. And I'm like, I know I know how to flat iron hair, right? And I don't have a lot of leave out, right? I literally probably have like four or five pieces. But you know, them four or five pieces will destroy your whole hair. Like, you'd be like, man, everything else is beautiful, but. You just got like a little bantu knot on top of your Yeah, head. I just got a bantu knot on top of my head to separate the leave out <laughs> from the other hair so I don't get too confused. And I'm surfing the um, YouTubes for the girls to tell them how to lay their edges. Some of y'all out there. Are brilliant some of y'all got to do better they be like i'm here on this youtube video to show you how to lay your edges and to blend that leave out because y'all be out here looking crusty and i said she talking about me yes um but what i found why didn't y'all tell me about the care care styling waxing stick that's supposed to be the holy grail i didn't even know this product is this it's from care care and it's like a stick and it's a wet stick and when you after you got your leave out as straight as you can like with a blow dry if you're washing it right because that's why I'm, I'm gonna do a little wash on it right okay and then before you like when you dry it right you're supposed to put the little piece of wax on it mm -hmm. with the heat to protect it and then you skid that old um flat iron down it didn't the bitch blend in like peruvian hair really why ain't nobody i don't went and seen at least 15 bitches do it on young black queens do it on youtube to the point I didn't have to Google it. I said, oh, where is it at? And, of course, we in Silicon Valley. Ain't they in that none Walmart, not none Target, ain't in nothing. And you know the beauty supplies don't be carrying care of care because it's right on the borderline of being like a fancy product or a mm -hmm. stylist product and slash over the counter. So I had to hit that Amazon for that two-day shipping. And it said, I'm talking about ain't going to be here to Sunday. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to be cute this weekend. Oh. I ain't know about the styling stick. You need to go get a beanie. I'm that out of touch. You are. And the thing is, I don't want to just keep flat iron this, right? Because like it's more and more heat, and it ain't going to get sh straight as I need it. So I might as well wait for my little stick to come. You ain't got no Carol's Daughter or something you can no, put No, I need that waxing stick. Because that's what the girls told me to lay. Because I already got something to lay my edges. I got my good edge control. I forgot what it's called. So it's by Curls. At C U R L Z. When I tell you that edge control, all you need is a half a tip of your pinky nail, and all your edges will be in place. And it ain't flaky. It don't. It ain't raggedy. Now I just got to get the care care stick. Ain't nobody told me about care care stick. You can't use Miss Jessie's. No, no, that's for curling. No, you oh. really trying to revert some shit. <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm just looking through the cabinet of all your shit you got down here. No, that's like a moisturizing cream. Maybe oh. I've been going to burn my little hair up. My hair be like, shh. That'd be like putting coconut oil on, put a hot iron on, it just start frying it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't use it on this pink moisturizer? I don't have no pink moisturizer, but I wouldn't do pink moisturizer in a hot ass flat iron. No, that is not something Nyambi Wiz would do. Uh oh. So I miss, it took a lot of research. I wish I would have did more research earlier this week, and I could have had it by now. Yeah. But it made me happy because I was like, oh, as soon as I found it, because, like, one person said it. Then another one said, I said, wait a minute. This is Black Girl Magic, and it's been hidden. And then as soon as I Googled the name of it on, like, put the name of it in Google, all this shit came up, and it's, like, all five-star reviews. Oh. And all it is, and on Am this I know is a hood classic, because on Amazon, you know how usually it'd be white women be posting videos uh -huh. and pictures? Ain't nothing but black women on there talking about looking my leave out. Oh. Ain't no leave out. I was like, oh, this the product. And now that I think of it, I actually think my stylist used some of it. Oh. But I, you know you don't be paying attention, really. I just thought it was some stylist shit. You right? ain't you, ask her? I wasn't thinking. Oh. I Actually, if I come figure out this, we can't straighten my hair. I was going to call her. Oh, uh, are we just going to go back to sis? Oh, yeah, I can go. Actually, I will trust her. But the thing it takes so long to get an appointment, I might have to go. I would like to have to go to like a white salon. Mm. And, but I just need you to flat iron my hair. Oh. Right, I just need a professional grade, you know, because the other option, the thing is, flat irons at home don't get as hot as professional flat irons, mm. right? So then I would just go to the white salon and get a hot and take every curl from my hair, mm. or the um, you know, it's a lot of Latinos out here. Maybe get a Dominican blowout, hit the Dominican salon. I ain't gonna let them wash this week when they've been a mildew man. Uh -uh. I'm like, oh, I don't washed it, I don't blow it. I just need you to flat iron it, mm. and that's what I that push kind of shirt. That's what I would do because I still got another month. I yeah. so left for this weave, honey. Oh, you don't I'm think you think my weave is raggedy? No, baby, I'm just saying. I don't well, know. I'm asking you since somebody looking in. How does it look? This your part. weave don't look, look at, good. don't look at my bantu now. Uh oh, look at this. I can't stop looking at your bantu. Why? Now because it's just sitting up there. 
here. What about this? If I cover it, look. Look. I can't unsee it. <laughs> no, your curls look nice. And the hair feel it. Uh, oh, I can touch it now? You always can touch it. Oh. Shout out to Ivy Lee Tresses. Ivy Lee Tresses. This is Ivy Lee need to go ahead and get us a coupon code Come so on. we can get so we can get this uh some money. No, it is worth it though. This weave doing too good for me to just call it. Cause at first that's another thing. Cause you know sometimes when you get like a cheaper weave, mm -hmm. you be like, all right, mm, I'm gonna just wear it cute for about you know four weeks and then whatever happened, right? Mm -hmm. I remember, no, no, I'm rock this, honey. Well, okay. This ain't going nowhere. So um, I appreciate um, all the women on YouTube. It was like Keisha. Slay here all day, all of them. Thank you, girls, for educating me because it's been a while since Nayambi done had her her hair and her weave out. The thing is, because the last time I had a weave weave, a good one, like I think my hair would, I, it probably was when my hair was permed, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't, I don't remember getting a weave since I've been natural, like a heavy duty weave where Never. it's maintenance, right? Well, you had one, but you, it was, came like out it. bad, and you ended up taking that shit out in yeah. like three weeks. So, like, it's been a while since I've had, like, a really, really good weave where you maintain it, right? Where you want to maintain it, right? Compared yeah. to more, like, costumey where you just wear it to it look a little raggedy, then you go back to your own normal self. Mm -hmm. This type of weave, you want to maintain, honey. That's so, that good weave. It is. So, I'm um, I'm enjoying myself on that. But that's all the check-in I got. Like, I'm so happy today I actually took a day off. Right. Like I've worked from home and I've had days off, but I've always had days off and something to do. So I'm excited just to have a complete day off. It's, mm. it's completely hit. What are we planning on doing? Well, actually, I guess it's not a day off. We have a lot of things to do this weekend. We're invited to a housewarming. Mm -hmm. We have an ugly sweater party to go to. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to return my passport. I need to turn in my passport so mm -hmm. I can hit these streets and um get it stamped. But I don't know. Just overall, just. Plan on having a good time. Oh, okay. Yeah, now what you got going on? Niggas. What? Oh, my God. Your boy is about to be internationally known. And uh -huh. when he know, he known on the microphone. Uh -huh. Because, niggas, I'm going to motherfucking Berlin uh -huh. to run the motherfucking Berlin Marathon. Oh, my God. How are you feeling? Congratulations. Oh. Thank you, thank you, okay. thank you. I was the only one in the room. Yeah, I thought I had a lot more people in here. But no, oh. I'm excited. Your, your boy's going to Berlin. I got the email today that said, guess what, Nerums? Oh. I said, what's up, Berlin Marathon? Yeah. They said, nigga, you got in. Oh, okay. And it's like, you can see that Berlin wall and eat um, snitchels and and wear later I'm, hosen and shit like that. Nira, I'm sorry to cut you off. I want to show Nira the before and after. Oh, look at her. She got a bind two knot too. Look after. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Can we put this on Instagram? I don't want to do this to this girl. <laughs> look at the before, Nira. Damn, she got a bind two knot too. She got she got like a nice um, blunt bob, y'all. But in the middle, she got a little ponytail, look like a troll hair. You yeah, know, like the trolls hair, like yours. <laughs> is that how I look? Yep. Now do it. Yes. I look that bad. <laughs> no, but yours oh. is just yours is a little bit more compact. And then the next picture, sis is late. It's just silky and smooth. And she's so embarrassed, she wiped her face out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to cut you off, Nero. I just had to show. I can't wait to get this product. I'm, I want to give it a stocking stuff for the all black women. Oh. Do okay, Nero. Shout out to um Berlin though. Y'all, what are we supposed to do in Berlin? Like is seven days enough or should we go for like ten right. days and go to what? The Netherlands, Prague, Budapest, yeah. Budapest? Am I saying that right? Budapest. Budapest. Yeah, but I'm excited. This is the thing is the world major. So this is New York City, Berlin Marathon, London, Tokyo, Chicago. Damn it, there's one more I always forget, but it's six races. And then, like, you get, like, this big-ass medal. Uh, I said Chicago. Boston. Mm. Boston was the last one. So, it's six races. It's called the World Majors. And, like, these are, like, the most popular races in the world, like, to run. And most of the times, your ass either need to get in via lottery, uh, which is hard to do, uh, raise a shit ton of money via charity, or, like, be a pro athlete and be fast as hell. And since I'm not fast and the nigga out here still trying to get this premium going, uh, I got this I got this lottery. Uh -huh. And, you know, I'm in there. Look I'm at the in Lord. there like screen there. Look yeah. at the Lord. Why don't you do it? Yeah. What's meant for you is what? 
It was actually some good news to be had because I, I got some bad news like right before I got that. Yeah. You know, I had a job interview. And then like, you know, I, I thought I was a shoe in. And the nigga was like, yeah, you know, I like you. We're going to get your ass going. And he came back and was like, yeah, my supervisor think you too senior for this position. Mm-hmm. The fuck that mean? So I'm overqualified? <laughs> I ain't never seen the nigga just over. Y'all not, so y'all not taking overqualified niggas? What? <laughs> is that what it is now? I guess, honey. <laughs> y'all don't want to pay me my worth? Yeah, well, you know, we, we are trying to, I was talking to the, the, the hiring manager trying to figure out if we can make this role a little bit more senior so we can bring you in. Mm-hmm. But he was like, no, nah, we're looking for somebody, uh, you know, a little junior. Multiple. what that mean? Mm-hmm. So y'all, y- y'all, y'all not hiring capable ass niggas. niggas. <laughs> is that, is that the, is that the question? Is that the final answer? That's why I wanted to ask this ass. So, so you're saying that I'm capable, I, I'm I'm capable to do the job, but I'm too capable, so y'all not going to hire me? Mm-hmm. Mm, fuck y'all niggas. Um, What's meant for you is what? Meant for me. That job was meant for who? Somebody else. But after I got off that phone, I checked my email. And what did the Lord say? Nigga, you going to Berlin. Stay the path, my child. Mm-hmm. Stay the path. So I'm I mean, excited. you can still connect with that recruiter, too. Like, yeah. you're still a, every connection. Yeah, I agree. But Every you know, connection. it's Berlin time now. I'm excited. Any of y'all other people, y'all run? Do y'all run? Some niggas do. I know. I'm trying to cut back on niggas. Oh. Some people do. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of something. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so I kind of, I was like, <laughs> you don't probably remember this. No, I don't. When you called me nigga, and I was like, I don't want you to call me nigga. Oh no my more. goodness, Niram, Niram tries me. <laughs> that was so funny. Niram tries me constantly. Ooh, no, because you got way all up in your uh, draws about it, and you just got mad. Niram constantly tried me. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's just my main check in. Is that I'm going to Berlin. I'm excited. And, you know, I look forward to seeing running these races, y'all. That's all I really got is that I got in Berlin. I'm ready to go. That's so good. I know I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Y'all give us some tips and tricks, too, if you have anything. Right. What's going on? Like, any of y'all been in Berlin? Where do I need to go? Is some places I need to travel to, hop on some planes to? Like, what say y'all? Like, what else do we need to do? Like, what food you get? The thing about, um, I want to say New England, but England, uh, the original uh, white ass England, is that they not really known for their cuisine there. Like it's all it's a little bland. Yeah, it's a yeah. little bland there. But what are you talking about? We're we're, ta- we're gonna be in Central Germany. Mm-hmm. Do you know where you're going, my nigga? No, no. <laughs> okay. I just know it's over Help there in Lord. England. Help Let them. me pull up a map. Honestly, y'all know where I want Berlin. to go. I wanted to, we don't have a, we haven't had an episode about travel. I wanted to go to Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. That's where I really want to go to Costa Rica and sit on someone's beach and just be super still. Yeah, but I'm excited. I'm planning a whole day. Yeah, because it's by the Netherlands. It's by Munich. Go ahead, stroll out. It's all Vienna. It's like that area. I'm trying to figure out how. Oh, oh. Poland. Oh shit! You see what I'm saying? It's central. Oh, Austria, like that that area. Gotcha. Denmark gotcha. is right across the water from Sweden. Mm-hmm. Lithuania, like that area. I mean, I'm not interested in going to Poland at all. No, you want to get on Poland Springs water? Nah, that's not where it come from. I know. Oh. <laughs> I think I want to head the other way. Which way is that? Like, I think I want to head what, Netherlands, like Netherlands, Belgium, Paris. Uh-huh. Like, I think I want to head towards that way. Oh, okay. Um, but again, I, I think it would be beneficial to go to like um, Ooh, Sweden. Vienna. You don't want to go to Sweden? Mm, no. Maybe, mm. What about Ukraine? Nah. Okay. Romania, that whole crew. What about I Greece? Greece is up to it. That's far though. That's down there with Croatia and stuff. But anyway, we'll keep y'all updated, and we yeah. cannot wait. I'm excited. Yeah, but near I'm talking about uh, when you told me stop calling him a nigga. He's like, I prefer <laughs> if you don't call me a nigga. I'm like, not a problem, nigga. <laughs> I think that's what I said too, wasn't it? Because he was just so harsh with it. Over some other shit, it's like, nigga, something, something, something. I was like, damn, can you not call me a nigga no more? <laughs> and I never know if Nero playing or not. So I say, you right. 
If you ask me not to call you that, I would not call you that, sweetie. <laughs> you not? Because it was like, baby, I love you. Nigga something. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You've been living in California too long. Did your feelings get hurt? I was like, you just so rough with it. What? Like you got on Timberlands and uh, I fucking, do. I got on but, and, and and gray sweatpants. But I actually, I just got on Doc Martens and some. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> all right, come on. We got. Oh, you got another some more checking. No, that's all I got. Well, we got a little pillow talk for. Oh, uh, you want to talk about this is us? Y'all see, this is us. What did the black guy who tips call it? This too much. Yes. Because it's the season. What is it? Mid winter. It's the winter. This I don't know. The holiday finale. The winter. When did these holiday finales start? When I was younger, I remember these shows used to go for like thirty two episodes, exactly. for like twenty two episodes, and now they give you a clean, you know, fifteen. Because it's the writers, the writer stuff. Oh, you know, writers, remember so that big this? ass writer strike when? Um, oh, that's what that was about. Yeah, undergrad. So the writers say they ain't getting paid enough money. <laughs> they ain't getting paid enough money, and they ain't got no time for their family. <laughs> I ain't gonna say no shit. I mean, I guess so because mm-hmm. they have to take time to write, yeah. and then I'm assuming the writers have to be around once they're filming too. Mm-hmm. So usually, when the actors have the time off, the writers not necessarily off; they're writing, right, and preparing. So their time away isn't as much as the actor's time away. And the actor, I'm assuming the actors get paid more or the writers get paid more. I don't know. I would assume anybody behind the scenes get paid more. Me too. But, you know, you never know. I guess this depends on type of show, too, it is. Because mm-hmm. it's more about the forerunners and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, that done came up. Where should we begin, Nerums? Should we begin with... Spoiler alert. Okay. On everything. Yeah. Kate, who gets on my nerves. Yes. Let's start with... Do you want to start in Vietnam or do you want to start? I said Kate. Okay. Exactly. Crickets. <laughs> Kate and Toby, um, they going to the doctor. Mm-hmm. They baby doing good. This their second ultrasound. That baby got a big head just like Toby. Everything's mm-hmm. good. The doctor was like, so what you do for a living? She said, I be singing like Adele and going on tour. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did she say she did? Adele Grams. Whatever. And the doctor was like, well, I know you enjoy pretending to be Adele, but you might want to rethink that. She said, I can't tell you to quit, but everything looks good, but I'm worried about your high-ass blood pressure. And you sitting down for two hours in the car driving to sing, you know, um, rolling in the deep is not good for you nor that child. There's a fire. (laughs) And then what bothered me about Kate, she had a nerve to make this a storyline. Because she ain't got shit else to do. I mean, how stupid do you sound, Kate? Okay. She's like, I mean, this is the first thing I really love doing in a very, very long time. Bitch, ain't you want to have a baby your whole life? It is just temporary. First of all, when that big-headed baby come, ain't going to be no rolling in the deep. Okay? She can sing it to the baby. <laughs> and old hating ass Toby, he just want her to stay at home. But what the real talk was for that episode was they came to have this come to Jesus moment when they were both like, yeah, we just kind of terrified that you're gonna lose this baby again. Because also during the appointment, because she had a lot, since she's high risk, she had like a um, like one of the blood and what's the one when you get the amniotic fluid? Yeah, like a very very detailed like idea, all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And so they knew the the gender, and they was like, no, nah, we don't know the gender. And they had this jump to Jesus most like we don't want to know the gender because that get us too attached, right. right? Like we almost pretending like this might not happen. It's like they're almost preparing it being set up for the worst to the point. Right, because I don't think it's not wrong with that. Right, I think you have to come to face to face with that, but at the detriment of enjoying her being pregnant. Right, she. I'm assuming she what halfway through her pregnancy. Well, right, yeah, she, and she's starting showing shit. Yeah, like she's halfway through her pregnancy, and they haven't even enjoyed her being pregnant. Like I've never, I've, I've, I'm not pregnant, but I would assume it's something special <laughs> between you and your partner during that time that you want to remember. Right, and it's like they were so distracted they couldn't do that. But they finally worked through it, and they started to uh, enjoy it. And it turns out they having a baby boy. Mm. I seen it through that big old head. Other un <laughs> what? <laughs> you didn't see the ultrasound of that baby? No, I didn't. You ain't see on screen. Another um, storyline where Kate is reaching. How you know it was a boy from a big ass head? No, just keep going. <laughs> just roll with me. <laughs> Don't challenge me. <laughs> Um, her best friend, that skinny girl that I told y'all, everybody need one of them skinny girl friends in their life because Beth was being, I mean, sorry, Kate was being sad with the skinny girl and the skinny girl was like, snap out that shit. 
bitch, I got a solution, right? You need friends who are solution oriented. Mm -hmm. And that friend talking about, I got a friend, I need a friend who need a whole choir director and all this good stuff. So she went to the school and was like, I be the choir director. The black man was like, she, you don't got to say nothing else. You come down here and teach these kids. Mary had a little lamb. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about your credentials. When you finish school. Now Kate got a sense of here and talking about not class of 98, school of hard knocks. <laughs> not the hard knock life. Yes. And the black man was like, damn. Can't hire your ass. Yeah, no matter how. Never mind, I'm going to say something. I'm going to talk about white privilege and supremacy. <laughs> and, and guess why? Because she didn't have a degree. But guess how many credits short she was? Eight. So she four months short of having a degree. She can get that in one semester. That's one semester. You go to the right um, University of Phoenix of Everglades, you can get it in probably two weeks. Well, shit. The question is, is it summertime with them accelerated ass the courses? courses? And you can get all that shit done. <laughs> in just four weeks in summer. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to put a nail in them on hold though <laughs> you can't be rolling in the deep while you got right. them um labs and honestly if you really be funny them could be two science courses them could be two four credit um science courses that you can knock out like Niram said in six weeks right so what is up the summer school should be hard even though. if school's starting find us up for four weeks not gonna be your perm and all you need is credit no credit Shit. we done solved it for Beth so that was uh, not Beth that's Kate then I guess we can transition from Kate to Randall and they crew first of all oh snitching at I don't think she I think Kate snitched she done told Tess she done told mama that what? Tess is gay mm -hmm. or think she gay Yeah. or having what is it I think so, but I love women who's the one that's the one I keep thinking of she having urges like old oh boy and I, green leaf. Oh my god! You said like the man in green leaf. <laughs> I've been having name? these urges. <laughs> Nigga, you gay? What did you mean? So he beat he, no the man in green leaf too. Oh, like this test. She a baby. She not mm -hmm. sure what she's feeling and right yeah. all that stuff going on. So I give but her. But she just life. know she don't like boys. Come on, <laughs> truth, right? Yeah. Compared to that grown nigga on green leaf, I'm having urges. Listen, sir, mm -hmm. puberty's far and gone. 15 years ago. Anyway. Damn. What? It's been 15 years since I had a puberty? No, you a grown man. You about 25. <laughs> <laughs> Only real friends get that shape. But so Kate done went and told grandma and grandma done picked up tests from school and grandma hinted anything going on. Right. She might as well said, you like vagina? Like that's all they <laughs> Grandma, um, Rebecca ain't saying. Do you like vagina? She trying to hint at it. Right. So how's school? So how's yeah? How's middle school? Yeah. How's life? How's friends? Yeah, look, what they used to say back in the day. Yeah. You got to study. You got. <laughs> now, Grandma, political right? Do you have any partners? Right. Do oh. you have a study partner? You... <laughs> <laughs> Do you like to <the> study? <laughs> And then Testo figured out she was she talking about Kate done told you. And grandma, grandma can't hold water. No. What happened to the grandma to be like, you are my firstborn granddaughter. I know everything about you more than you do. I was just waiting for you to um, admit it. You know how you'd be like, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Nope. But at the end, was it Rebecca did say a word when she went to her and was like, you know, your aunt came to me because she just wanted somebody to support you. I didn't tell your parents. I just want to know, want you to know you have someone to support you. And mm -hmm. also, Grandma Becca was the truth. She was like, I'm telling you to not hold secrets unnecessarily about your true self because that's what I did my whole damn life. And I learned that I got literal aches and pains mm -hmm. from it. She said it started as a stomach ache, then it went to a headache, then it started hurting to my bones. Then it went to the point where I just had to keep ibuprofen in my purse like candy. That's how I am, but yes, right now. Nope, no lot. <laughs> and she said, I just don't want my granddaughter to have to go through that same type of pain. Mm -hmm. I said, that's a word, though. It is. Um, stress and, you know, things you hold in um, and don't purge out, it turns into poison and it does hurt mm -hmm. at the end. Turns into bad gas. T what? And then That's that what gas you roll up your back. Oh my god! And you have gas all between your shoulder. Blades. I was gonna say by your um lungs. You think you're having a uh, attack? Oh, then it goes from like your shoulder blades down to your lungs, and it sit up. And under you think there. you're having a heart attack, honey? Mm -hmm. All that, child. I mean, you you breathe deep too much, and then it go into your heart and feel like you got palpitations. Oh, what's it called? Palpitations. Oh, okay. Um, so with Randall and his family, where you want to begin? Uh, you want to start with the debate? He was getting his ass handed to him. Randall was acting like he was giving up his dissertation. 
findings, his findings, his results section. Mm -hmm. um, P squared equals um, the square root of the quadratic of what? And then, oh what? boy. Just you, on nigga shit. You ain't from Detroit. Everybody, ooh. You ain't from Detroit, nigga. You ain't from around these parts. You ain't around here. You drive back to where you gotta go. And I'm Randall. You are correct. <laughs> And then whenever he tried to, then Randall tried to get up on him and then the other guy still tried to clap back. He had to say, sir, brother. He went from saying, sir to brother. Brother, I gave you your chance to talk. Now give me mine. Boss up and get this money, nigga. And then Randall, and ooh. Then Randall I was raised by a white family. You're going to black man. <laughs> yeah, wait. What the fuck you want us to say? <laughs> <laughs> but Randall did give a word, right? I think that speaks to black politics and politicians. Especially the ones who've been in, you know, areas for so long. And they do say things like, I'll look into it, right? Mm -hmm. I'll get it done. And just because it's some someone who lives in the neighborhood and you used to, you right. take that as an answer. And sometimes you do need new blood in there to shake shit up. Right. Right. Or you need someone a little bit more persistent that don't, is not as invested, right, in the politics of everything. And mm -hmm. I do think Randall would do a good job at that. And I believed him when he was like, you know, and I'll go to the city to make sure to get shoveled. And if the city ain't shoveling, I'm going to come help you shovel. Right. Right. And I believe he would do that, right? I, th I think he would literally put together a block club to be like, we want to shovel the snow. Oh, that's going to drive Beth up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> because the city ain't coming to shovel this snow. Right. But the T is at the end, his Asian counterpart um, manager came and was like, child, you going to lose. It was a good try, though. Yeah. And Randall was like, huh? But look how good I did. Right. Yeah. Nick, you still going to lose. You going to lose. You like Beyonce at the star search, nigga. You, no matter how, try, how good you try, you losing. And then Niram was like, um, he, he now must, must not be living in Donald Trump's America. Because <laughs> if he's living in Donald Trump's America, he is still a chance, honey. It is. And then when they go home, <laughs> here come Deja. I, um, I've been texting my mama. She live in Delaware. She said she got a good job at the White Castle. I want to go see her cool okay go see your mama then go see your mama we'll figure it out our time it took deja off guard mm -hmm. then she finally left with a smile on her face yeah then here come Tess down the stairs before we get to Tess coming down the stairs would you would if you was her aunt if you was kate would you would have told the grandma would you i don't think i would have told anyone is that inappropriate should i t should you tell i don't have any nieces and nephews so i don't know should i is that something you tell a parent? Is that what's um, folks who have kids? Is that appropriate? No snitching. You can't be the cool uncle and aunt. You over there snitching about sexuality? Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't think that was no one's place to share. The thing is, it's gonna come out regardless. So Maybe the if she was is, having sex. Go ahead. That's the thing. It's gonna come out regardless. So let yeah. me go ahead and get more intel to see if they exactly. if, if they out there on some risky behavior. They yeah. over there doing some high school. Oh well, she missed some some middle school or you sit. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> stop that shit. Uh, but you know, her ass still, you know, still in the phase of like trying to hold hands and shit like that. Like, oh, yeah. that's puppy love shit. Cool. Yeah, because I think I have to start snitching if I have to do with sets, be just because kids are dumb, mm -hmm. and I need to make sure they 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 need to know what protection is. Right, it's certain precautions you got to take. Or, or the opposite of the way. Like, sometimes I think younger folks when they're in same sex couples, they don't think you have to take the same precautions. No. Oh. Right. Okay, you're a lesbian. Condoms might still need to be in the play. <laughs> Just because it's not a, a real live penis with blood right. pumping through it, right? Right. Anything penis like. Anything penis like might is gonna need a condom. Right. Right. Any, Dildo, cucumber, <laughs> broom, broomstick, whatever. Hey, something. <laughs> right. Or anything that's touching vaginas or open or what's it called orifices. Orifices. Anything open and wet. <laughs> Or dry. Or oh <laughs> needs to be protected. Yes. In none of the conversations, I would be more worried about. Mm -hmm. Right? Because even if you're talking about sexual education in schools, as trash as that is, they barely teaching folks how to do it, you know, whereas the more heterative normative way, right? Let mm -hmm. alone showing these kids, God forbid, right? If they're interested in same sex or if they're bi, right? Like, they're not teaching that. Not a, did they teach that? That's what uh, they should know. be teaching. Sure. If they're teaching you about sex between a man and a woman, they should also teach you about sex between a man and a man and a woman and a woman, how to protect yourself. You would think so. If we're talking about sex and protection. Baby, what you talking about? Most of these schools don't even have a gym anymore. So, huh? let alone a Ain't health no class. Ain't no real sex. No. But mm -hmm. how'd Jules Santana get it? <laughs> 
the kids don't go outside. Baby, them niggas, let alone got Jim, uh, you talking about sex ed. They, did, be, they probably been cut that shit. What did you learn in your sex ed? Or when um, did you have it? We had it a couple times. So I remember in elementary where um, all the girls went to this one room and watch oh videos. It sounds so sketchy the way you <laughs> describe it. That's how it, it was. so sketchy. I just remember it was like all the girls in the school go to the gym <laughs> at this time. Not all the girls. All the girls. And I just remember all of them coming back like, oh my God, I'm so traumatized. I'm just going to bleed and just bleed and bleed. And like, this is elementary. I was like, what? <laughs> And then, like, the next week, it was, like, all the boys. Please report to the gym. <laughs> report to the gym. <laughs> and then we came back and said, oh, we just got white stuff shooting out of us. Because <laughs> I remember one of my friends was like, do you bleed, too? And I was like, I don't know. Maybe I found out <laughs> when I go to the gym next week. <laughs> You parents, <laughs> so y'all that, do better with your children. Start that, talking about sex and their reproductive health and their sexual health and their reproductive organs. Like, don't make it a weird thing. So that was elementary, and then I didn't have sex ed again until like high school. Oh damn! And, it really do need to be in middle school though. And it wasn't even like sex ed; it was like a health class. Yeah, like it was like half gym, half health, and like during the health. Yeah, class. it was like a 30 minute segment. It was like, yeah, a couple week segment of sex ed, but we also did like CPR shit. <laughs> so it was like half CPR training, um, quarter percent gym, quarter percent gym. and like a quarter percent uh, sex ed. Like, it, it, and I think sex education does need to be something that's gradual, right? Like, I don't think you need to give everything to the fifth grader, right? Mm hmm. So I do think it's appropriate to talk about menstruation and all that stuff. But I think both parties should be educated on that. Like menstruation, like both. Man, okay, if they don't want to be in the same room, fine. But did so in y'all session, did they teach you about what a girl menstruation was? No. Okay. But they did make us wear those uh pregnant be uh belly shits for like we What? Yeah. They had they made the boys wear those like pregnant belly joints. In elementary school? No, middle school. Oh. No, not middle school, in high school. And then you had like the baby they be crying. You I remember the baby crying. That was an optional class that yeah. I did not take. That was part of the quarter percent. Like, you know, some people had it for like the semester. We had it for like a day because, you know, funding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I made it. I don't know how anyone made it. I don't know how we all don't have a thousand kids. <laughs> like, What? But I, that's where your parents step in. Like, your parents really should step in. Your doctor. Like, it should be a village. You should be getting this. It, it should be an ongoing conversation from elementary school, actually earlier than that, right? So starting mm -hmm. in like kindergarten all the way up into like high school, right? Longer than that to college, right? Till you really understand your, yourself and your body because then when do you have the conversation about talking with a partner and finding out what you like sexually, what you don't like sexually, mm -hmm. maybe if there's some pain there, right? You know, learn like it's a continual process yeah. and we don't treat it like this journey. Because it's so shunned. Because actually, they need to be talking about more of like sexual protection and all that in middle school. And then high school, it should be flipped more towards like STDs and almost, you know how they make you get immunizations? Mm -hmm. They need to do some STT, STD testing in high school. Yeah, they should. That's a lot. Oh, I'm too rogue, honey. Look, you want to come on in here? Yeah, that's FERPA, though. What do you mean? That's FERPA HIPAA? and HIPAA. But if you have a chronic illness that's contagious, you cannot go to some of these schools. Mm. What's the difference between getting an immunization shot? Mm. Or not getting it. Because some schools don't allow you to come if you don't have all your immunizations. Oh, so you're saying schools shouldn't let people come in if they got gonorrhea. Or they don't can't. fucking try that or switch my words, oh. right? But I'm do I will say that they can say you can't come unless you get treated, right? Mm -hmm. Like you need to get treated. And, sure. and as a 12-year-old or five, 50, why wouldn't you be treated? Mm. Right? Like, what are we, if, what's the opposite effect of not being treated? Mm. Burning pee. Okay. Niram don't want to play this game with me. No. Y'all know I be rogue when it comes to shit like that. No, I'm not saying keep the kids out with STDs. Uh. I'm saying treat the kids with the STD. Stop, stop being scary, right? They'd go untreated for years and years and years. Penises start falling off. Like, all this. 
unnecessary. Mm. And they keep spreading it. Thank God I never had to deal with something like that. Because that's what happens. I that know. shit go ram, ram rapid yeah. through schools, and like the, the flu. Thing, yeah, and the next thing you know, the shit ain't got no motherfucking um, antibiotics. Because that shit don't work no more. Because even if you go test it, how does it work for STD? If you get tested and you find out you have an STD, the doctor's treating you, right? Like, it ain't one yeah. of those things where they're like, good luck. No. So, that's what I'm saying. So, what is the harm? And just say you've been tested. Like, I, mm. I'm not saying the school should have records of that, right? Isn't that what the doctor they have? Is that not required by doctors to treat you? <laughs> I, I just think it's... Am I, I'm just coming from a privileged stance because I had insurance? <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I also think, like, it, it's definitely a hip or a furp or stuff, especially when you're doing it in school. Because, like, I see what you're saying. Like, it makes perfect good, the good sense, wow. baby. How does it look like an execution? But, like, execution and then the thing is... The stigma. The, the motherfuckers who uh, end up getting having the package, whatever it is... Yeah. It's going to come out regardless. Cause somehow. Because somehow the teacher's going to teach uh, treat your ass different or the nurse is going to treat them different. <laughs> really? And then they're going to look at their ass like you've been taking your meds. And oh, my like, God. You know what I'm saying? And shit yeah. like that. And it's going to come right. out. You're right. And they're like, oh, such and such got something. Because her ass been in that nurse's room for a long time. <laughs> and now during lunchtime, she got to go there and take her medicine. What's she taking? Oh, Can she's taking something it? for that, that clap. <laughs> You already know how it is. Because that's how shit travels. But is that the benefit? Like, is that worse? I don't know. Than having niggas infected? No, it's not worse. (laughs) But you know what I'm saying? It's still a a HIPAA or a FERPA. Since it's in school, it's still an issue. So we'd rather not ask. It's like the army. Don't ask, don't tell. (laughs) I don't know no other way. I mean, I guess you can't do that. Because I think if you think about the workplace, Mm. too, that won't translate. No. I'm talking about sex education, though. Hmm. Something to think about. It well, is. maybe I just um, started that when we have kids. When they go to high school. I'll be like, oh, you got to get your STD, STD test. They're going to be like, what the? And that's the thing. Don't they get them at home now? Well, most of them, I don't know. I don't no, that's the drug test. Yeah. My bad. Wrong I test. I guess that would be invasive. I'm processing through it. But how do you, I don't know. How do you stop it then? Because they're kids. You know, a few of them have enough sense to go get treated and all that, mm-hmm. but the majority won't. No. No, well, that's why you got to have the open lines of communication. With your kid. With your kid. And, and then you, that's why you got to have that cool uncle that's going to keep the secret. That dumb pen- And then <laughs> took their ass to the doctor to get that penicillin. <laughs> and then. Because it's like, antibiotic right. resistant. What is it? Gonorrhea <laughs> for clap? Both. I don't know. Shit. Uh-huh. Both of them. Anyway, I don't know how we got here. Tess has not even had sex. Oh, damn. That was a 20 minute tangent. Just. <laughs> God, Lee. <laughs> uh, what I didn't like though, it was dramatic. <laughs> um, and I just felt like, why, why won't somebody go there and hug that girl and tell them? I mean, Beth that they did love the her. cute thing, but that where, shit was so long. See two no, people who love you. That, I almost wish they would have been just like they did Deja. Deja was like, "Can I go see my mom?" And they was like, "Yeah, uh-huh. I want to test." Like, yeah, I'm, I might be a lesbian. They were like, oh, okay. Oh, okay, let us know when you know. Good night. <laughs> That might be the near of a Naomi response. Oh, okay, let me know when you know. Oh, oh okay. Cool. Cool. You got a girlfriend? Okay, good. You're too young mm-hmm. anyway. Look, you fucking? Good. You are? Okay, let's have a conversation. conversation. You ready? Go sit. Didn't you see your daddy bombed on that stage today? It's not about you, Tess. We know you gay. No, but what got me in his appearance is when he was like, did you have any clue? And he was like, no. I was like, no, because y'all so deep in y'all shit. That's how you didn't know. I don't know. Beth about to go into depression about this job. Randall, the doing Randall shit. They so self involved, honey. With the past that the kid is a distant second. Did you know she was gay? Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm glad she told us. In the future, did they get divorced? Oh, is I, this come on. Is this the turning point where uh, they get divorced? I don't think they divorce. Uh-huh. I think they, the writers said that they weren't going to divorce Randall and Beth. Like oh. I think they, the writers was like, we're not divorcing Randall and Beth because we want to see a couple that make it. And also, as people of color, uh-huh. right, what's not needed is another, basically another black divorced couple is not mm-hmm. what's needed. Like, that's not good for the culture. Oh, okay. So I think they've already committed to that. But that don't mean it can't be no separations. That don't mean it can't be no rough years. Um, yeah, because <laughs> in the future, future Randall and Beth still look like they was... That's what I'm saying. I didn't know if they was be. It was some tension there, but I yeah. didn't know it was because who we about to go visit, which who we found it. Who is it? Spoiler alert. White mama. White mama. Shouldn't white mama be a hundred? Uh, maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> we still going to visit. 
is the problem? I got the feeling that maybe white mama got some type of Alzheimer's though. Because mm. everybody looked like they was dragging their feet on it, right? Because yeah. everyone seemed like they loved Rebecca. Mm-hmm. So you would think of his mom, oh, we're going to go see grandma. We go. So I'm thinking it's something like either white grandma is very sick. Mm-hmm. Well, she and I, I'm sure she is, right? But I'm sure it's something like with her mind or maybe she's on like a respirator. Like something's there. Like right. it's not just grandma is getting old because she already was getting old. Mm-hmm. I think I think I want to call like maybe a dementia, a Alzheimer's. Something, right? Something like where people are hesitant, right? Where... It seems like everyone who was going to visit her, air quotes, was doing it dragging their feet. Mm-hmm. Like, no one was like, yeah, yeah, let's go see. It'll be good. Like, everyone was like, oh. Okay. Can we talk about where Beth, where <laughs> is Beth at? Where she the queen madam of the dance school? I don't know. What the hell she was doing? How we get Good job, Beth? ladies. I said Beth dance? Beth's with an S. Beth's. Beth's dance? And then that pin tail on the donkey? I said, yeah. oh, we doing some shit because um, white mama don't remember. Probably. But I thought the kids did that for their birthday. That's what I'm know. saying. It might be for the 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 triplets' birthday. Yeah, it might, and they just going to see their mom. Maybe mama dead, and they just going to see a ar- pause. <laughs> going back to Nyambi's check in. Pause right there. Now remember, white mama. White mama. Check in. I did another nannying job. <laughs> For a little Indian girl. She wasn't that bad. Like, actually, the mother was worse than the child. The mother, I don't know what was wrong with her. It was something not connecting. Fine. I was, Actually, me and the daughter was glad when her ass left. We had a good job. I mean, we had a good time. We was playing. And she was like, oh. And we were playing pretend. And, like, all her animals were like, mommy this, sister that, brother that. Like, that's how the name starts. So, it was like, brother John, mm. sister this. And we were playing. And I'm playing, too. I'm changing my voices. We getting it. Mm. Ooh, what, what type of voices did you make? Don't do that. What? Y'all ain't paying me. They pay me for the voices. <laughs> um, and then the, the baby was like, Nayams, Nayams. I said, yes. She said, can we do Grandmother Haji? I said, of course. Yeah, go get Grandma Haji. Do you know this girl brought a, um, a urn? When she, I said, oh, I said, wait a minute. I said, go, I said, your real girl? I said, I thought we were playing pretend. She said, this grandma, she, she always used to play. She would like you. I said, oh, 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 put her back. I said, go put, I didn't know what to say. Her, it, that. Put that back. What if she would have dropped those ashes? I would have got the vacuum (laughs) and vacuumed it up. And I would have put it back in the urn. And I'd be like, little baby, this our secret. (laughs) Don't tell nobody what done ha- conspired here. And if her mama ever requested me again, I was going to decline. <laughs> that threw me the hell off when she got that urn. Jesus. I said, oh, 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 go put it back. Go put Grandma Ramish back. Whatever her name. Put Grandma Ramish back. No, 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 no. Just. And I ain't touch it. I said, you put it back. Because she's talking about you want to hold her? No. No. <laughs> no. And that little picture of the grandma on the front of it. Oh, my God. I said, oh. <laughs> This I think is that's why. the first time I seen an urn and held it in. in uh, it was seen. I ain't touch it in person. Usually, a lot of black people don't do a lot of urns. That's why I'm you made into diamonds. I said, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I said, "They done brought that from India. That done made it through customs." <laughs> <laughs> so that made me think about um, this episode. Going back to this is us. Maybe white mama dead, and they just going to maybe just some white tradition, mm-hmm. and they going to visit her somewhere. Maybe by the tree. Because ba- White Daddy was... No, no, he was put in the ground. He wasn't cremated. I thought he was cremated. Oh, he was. But when we had a graveyard. No. Don't you remember a scene in the graveyard? I remember a tree. Them best season one. So we figure out White Grandma... Oh, what you going to say there? I can't remember now. Oh, okay. White Grandma is the one sick. Um, And Beth told Randall ass to sleep on the couch because she told him to drop out the fucking race. And he said, I got to see this through. And she said, but you made a promise to me that if ever I didn't want you to do this anymore, I'd just say the word and you'll stop. He said, and promise she's like, I'm is meant saying to be broken. Word. He ain't say promise is meant to be broken. Mm-hmm. He he pulled that black, as a man, you know, they black, as a woman, as a man, I got to see this through. Um, and Beth was like, I got your motherfucking number. She went in the linen closet and got the um, guest sheets and threw it on the uh, couch. I knew it was shady because their house is big enough. They got to have a guest room. I know, right? No, Deja in it, though. Oh, that's Deja, Deja room. Yeah, he ain't put them in the basement where Kevin was saying. He said, you, you sleep here on this couch. And then this is Randall with chaplets. But Beth. And she did the black woman, don't touch me. And then she went upstairs. And then we flash floor to um, her at her dance recital. Mm-hmm. The Swan Lates. And got to go see White Mama. 
Don't worry. You call your mama? Yeah, she on her way. I told her she would call him. Yeah, because I, they're together. Because as a black woman, I, I don't need you to come pick me up. I'll meet you there. Mm-hmm. I, my ex-husband don't got to come pick me up. I'll meet, what's the address? <laughs> I'll see you there. They're mm-hmm. together. Lastly, y'all know my least liked storyline. Take it away, Nero. Niggas in Vietnam. Yeah. Kevin and his black woman is gallivanting in the forest, honey. Go ahead, Nero. We'll say that again. And uh, white daddy and his old Omish ass brother. So let's start with Kevin, or let's just start with white daddy. He over there trying to make his help help his brother out, trying to get this nigga clean, and just like dope fiend uh, dope fiend manipulators, his ass go find some drugs and he get high as fuck, mm-hmm. and his ass talking about I ain't complete no mission, I'm staying home. Uh, and I ain't going back home and blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, a bomb then went off, and uh, Jack trying to figure out where the hell Nikki is at, and we can't find Nikki. So now we fast forward to... Now, we thinking. To Ford. We fast forward to Ford. You said to Ford. Ford. <laughs> Not, so you, it's backwards, forward, in the future. Right. We in forward. Now we in forward. We ain't in the, we in the present right now. Yeah. Here goes these motherfuckers got all type of translators trying to figure out who the hell this lady is. Come to find out like that the historian daddy was uh, fighting against his daddy. Mm-hmm. And um, and he was just having all types of shit. Yeah. All types of conversation. I'm over here trying to translate it through uh, Google Nero, Translate. What are you talking about? I'm trying to translate it through Google Translate. And Naomi throw my damn phone on the floor. I think she broke it. I did. <laughs> Nigga, I'm trying to watch this as us, and all I hear is Google. What was that? <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> translate it. What's Google assistant name? What's her name? I don't know. What was that? Cortana. That I don't saying. know. What, what was that? Like. I said, shut up. Both of y'all, I'm trying to watch this white family in Vietnam. And then, what was it? Then Kevin get to the place, and they said, um, well, we was going to go lay some, I don't know, put mm. some respect down for your uncle. Yeah. And the man was like, uh, ain't no Pearson died here. Right. We can't find no Pearson. Then I'm Kevin. What you mean? He said, then I'm the Asian man. Shit, he might be dead, but he ain't dying in Vietnam, my nigga. <laughs> he made it home. Then we do cut scene to an old dusty-ass trailer with an old man in the mail, and he throw the mail down, and what the mail say? Mm-hmm. Nicholas Pearson. Yeah. And what I'm more mad, because I'm shady, he live in Philadelphia. He lived down the street. Not only is he alive, he lived down the street. That nigga alive and well. Down the street. I wonder if Jack knew. Yeah, he knew. Please, it's Jack. I wonder what happened for Jack not to go check up on him. Maybe he did. He's not dead. No. Oh, I'm saying maybe he did. did. Yeah, because, you know, the brother's on that shit. I don't mm. even know what the shit was. He's supposed to be the damn medic, and he he, he smoked, or I don't know, taking the pills. He on the pills. He won't cut He probably right on some there. opioids or something. And Jack was right. Not, yeah, that's the name. Jack was right. He wasn't meant to be out there. Mm-hmm. White daddy. And so now we found out Uncle Nicky alive, mm-hmm. living in the trailer. Hopefully he off that shit. If he ain't off that shit, he gonna live forever. Mm-hmm. Mama Rebecca is the one who they going to see. I don't know if she did or alive. Kate having a b- boy. Tess gay. Deja want to go get her heart broken again by her mama. Um, Randall and Beth on the outs. We miss anything? No, that's it. This is us. That's the that's the recap. That's it. Mm-hmm. The, and the shit don't come back to MLK Day. <laughs> So I'm sure we're going to have to refresh this whole episode. Absolutely. Because I ain't going to know what the hell is going on. All right. All right. <clears throat> you want to do some quick news? Yeah, just, just, let's do some quick news before we get into Shout Out Friday. Um, I was going to do this Love Is. What? What's but, wrong with Love Is? It ain't back yet. I know, but uh, the producer, Slim, Slim, Selim. Yazir. Yes. What about Yazir? He's he's being sued for domestic violence Nets. and breach of contract. <laughs> contract. <laughs> Breach it. Oh my God. What happened? Did it, can you just tell me that? Did he just like cuss a bitch out? No. Oh, God. Because, you know, I can see Yazir doing that. I can see Yazir being like, listen here, you black winch. <laughs> 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 Not that that's good. 
Uh-huh. But that's a little more digestible if he just kind of cussed the actress out and told her, her to get off the fuck off his set. set. Mm-hmm. I can do that. What they saying? Is this real or is this fake news? This is on Jezebel. What? Is that real news? The director produ- producer Salam uh, uh, Akil sued for domestic violence and breach of contract. So somebody was coming from. Well, how long they said this? Don't, I guess it don't matter, honey. What done happen? Amber says she had, uh, uh, had oh. years. A physical Years. and sexual abuse, abusive relationship with him. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Who he produ- Where she find this girl at, or know. where does the girl find him at? I don't know, but where is so the complainant alleged that they began a dating relationship with involved frequent sexual contact about ten years ago. Um, but a, oh my God, this Jezebel is ridiculous. Um, but according to IBMB. IMBD. He has been married to writer producer Mari Brock Akil since 1999. Why are they doing math? We don't need you to do the math, bro. They didn't did it. It overlaps, okay? Or maybe they had an open relationship. Um, Brenner's accusations of abuse are numerous and harrowing. They include multiple instances of physical violence in the form of slapping, strangling, forced oral sex. Brenner alleged, for example, that during a birthday party in L.A., um, he asked her to follow him to the bathroom where he slapped her, causing her to stumble backwards, and then Commanded her to perform. Oh, I'm done. Um, this is love. What, what is what's the name of it? Love, love is. is love ain't. This ain't it. Get it together, J- Yazir. I'm gonna need you to get it together. Is she just filing a lawsuit? Yeah. Is she coming for coins. Yep. Uh, I don't know what to say. I hope he didn't do this. If he didn't do this, good. But if he did. Yaz there, Yaz there. Mari, what you gonna do, sis? Mm-mm. Don't let him fuck up the brand. He's bu- if this is true, he's gonna fuck up the brand again. We've seen him do this already on the show. And you know the show, so it'll be live action. What? Based off a true, true story. story. Come on. I don't like this at all. I don't like this either way this pans out. So I don't like this if this is if this young lady had to suffer through this, right? That's bullshit. I don't like this if the young lady lying. Like either way, this is bad. this is not good for the culture, and mm-hmm. I'm upset. Go figure it out. If you did wrong, own it. Oprah might fucking around and drop their ass. F- around? Do you know? Come on, Greenleaf for an hour and a half. Is our Greenleaf gonna be two hours a week? <laughs> I hope not, because I really like. I hope whatever happened, all parties can come together and hash it out, and everyone can be healed. What was a few episodes when I just kept saying, I just want everybody to be healed. Mm-hmm. I don't like that at all. I don't know, baby. This might be some Me Too shit. We got to stand up for them. I'm not saying, oh, I'm not saying not to. Oh, mm-hmm. you go through that with a full quarter law, oh. right? You you use all every resource you got, right, to prove your case, right? As mm-hmm. he should too, right? If he believes this didn't happen, what a proof. And if this happens, it's where's the proof, right? And mm-hmm. we see what happens. All right. I don't like that. Viola Davis is gonna. Um, Wait, Naomi, you said somebody said this. This ain't. What yeah. they, what was that? <laughs> Love is this ain't. <laughs> Love ain't. Love. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I really could have digested that more though if it was like alleged. You know what I could have took my verbal what? abuse because I think oh. I would have believed it. <laughs> Cause you talking about how uh, you see his character? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but I don't like all this sexual physical. Like that's too much. You crossing the line. I don't care what your temper is. But like cussing mm-hmm. the bitch out. I'm like, yeah. I don't know if you can sue somebody for cussing you out for calling you a bitch. I don't. This that's frivolous. I don't. Viola Davis <laughs> will pro- portray. Yes. Shirley Chisholm. Yeah. Okay. Now I love this, but Viola getting like Chadwick now. <laughs> well, who else? You Leave something have? at the table for the other girls too, Viola. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was a minute, Chad. Chad was paying everybody. Excuse me. And I loved it, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like, wait a minute, sis. I'm happy for. It. Well, first of all, I'm here for a Shirley Shirley Chisholm movie. Mm-hmm. Is it going? Is it nationwide or is it like Netflix or Amazon or uh, Amazon Studios has oh, won okay. the fierce bidding war? For the rights to a new series on Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman elected to Congress. According oh, it's a to, series. Yes. BT, where was you at? They probably lost in the fierce bearding war. BT, first one hundred and fifty dollars. The thing is, no, Viacom ain't putting no, no money money up for it. Yeah, 
Yeah, because it's going to be a bit production. But I think it's going to get a bit turnaround. Mm-hmm. I mean, why wouldn't we show up and show out for Shirley Chisholm when we did it for New Edition? Niggas. So are you telling me we're more willing to watch a New Edition story than Shirley Chisholm? First black woman to run for president? Yes. And con- <laughs> <laughs> yes. I hate y'all. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right, next story. What do you think about it on there? Um, I, I think it's dope. Yeah. But yeah, BET should have all <laughs> the thing is, baby. She's you the won't... first black woman elected to Congress. Shirley Chisholm is a legend. I understand, baby. In the black community. But you want rights. You want BET had the rights on all black stories. And Why the, the fuck is... not? White people have the rights to theirs. The thing is, baby, you already know this. BET is owned by Viacom. The John, Bob Johnson don't own BT no more. I miss him every day. It's owned by Viacom. I miss Bob every day. Oddly enough, who also own Blockbuster? Did you know Viacom own Blockbuster? I love Blockbuster. It's still one left. I know it's in Bend, Oregon. Yeah, I want to go visit. I wonder yeah. who be going up in there. A lot of people. Me? They they had like a mini docu series about it. Yeah. But um, like I said, Viacom is owned by BT. Yeah. I mean, or BT is owned by Viacom. Okay. They the budget's not for that. All the budget, all <laughs> they the just Viacom, got a commercial for appreciation on her birthday, a commercial during Black History. All Month. the Viacom budget is going to love all the love and hip hops because they own each one. Shay, come on. And then uh, all the Catfish series and paying off that stuff that was going on with Neve and Charlemagne therapy session. And Charlemagne therapy session. So with all that, they ain't, don't have no more money for BET. We get you niggas, but first of all, we keep missing the Soul Train Awards. No what, one told us. That's all we get. We get a Soul Train Award that they don't put commercials for. You get the Hip Hop Award, and then you get the BET Awards. I'm mad. No one and told me about the Soul Train Awards. And then you get Martin reruns and uh, the Jamie Foxx show reruns, and then that Ti show. <laughs> that's all you get on BET. Did y'all watch the Soul Train Awards? I heard that John B. came on there and slept. And Tyler Perry movies. That's what they Sometimes. play during the they day. They don't even play the good ones. The no. other sp- Bravo be playing the good ones. Yes. Okay. Next. Jordan Peele producing a sequel to the 90s horror film Candy. Candy Man. We just said this shit. Can we get a... Where are they filming it at? Can we be extras? <laughs> <laughs> we claim that. We just spoke this into existence. We surely did. I'm here for it. I can't wait to see it. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited. Um, and another thing is just a big shout out to Super Cent for getting uh, for uh, her company what making money. Super Cent. Okay, Super Cent. Uh, oh, girl, the beauty girl. Oh, okay. She got that beauty supply stuff. Oh, she's the one who made the, like a million dollars. Yeah, the crayon on Black Friday. Stuff. Yeah, it's like that crayon box. Crayon. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. The crayon case. How much was she selling them? I, know, I, don't I know. hope your manufacturer ready, sis. Sure, she did a million in ninety minutes. Wow. God. What that Instagram say? Is that her? Mm-hmm. What she hit it? What she say? Shit, crying. God. Where you at right now, sis? Cry, sis. Ooh, that sent chills through me. She better cry. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I ain't never heard of it. Yeah. God is good. Million dollars an hour and a half. What's meant when you tell God you need to be your provider? Look, he give you a million dollars in a ninety minutes. Me Meanwhile, you niggas is doing these um, what's it called? Them tickets for the Mega Millions. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna just ask the Lord today if He can give me a million. I take a year. Actually, you ain't got a rush. Lord, in a year, can you give me a million dollars? I need to put that in my prayer box. Don't rush, Lord. I don't need it in ninety. I take a year. Just give me a million dollars, Lord. Thank you. Tax free. Nadifa, hey. if you listen, I need you to come over and pray over my prayer box. Pray it's over been a, prayer it's box. been a while since you prayed over it. We need a refresh. We need a refresh. <laughs> need a cleansing. <laughs> Good for her though. Yeah. I've ne- I've never heard of it, so I'm gonna go. Um, yeah, I think out. I've seen it, but I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Good for her. Want to do some shout out Friday? Of course, it's time for shout out Friday. Neon's favorite day of the week. It is. So as always, to leave a five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher. Uh, we got two reviews from Apple Podcasts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one says best podcast around for popping for sure. And it says uh, if you want to laugh, but also hear about real issues that happen in the black community, listen to these two. I thought I said two holes at first. I was like, wait a minute, you're getting too comfortable. <laughs> listen to <laughs> these two. Nero and Nyambi became my friends in my head 
from the uh, first episode I heard. Give them a listen. You won't regret it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got another one that says, love, love, love. What is that? Laddie Soft? Laddie Soft. Um, and it says, this is the best podcast. Uh, the real, I love the realness that you all exhibit. Uh, I'm a bit older, almost 50, but really can relate. Uh, I have been listening to the older uh, the older episodes and loving every minute. Keep it up. Keep up the great work, encouraging love, and engaging the generation on uh, current social, political, and e- economic issues. Amazing. Oh, that's great. Um, we got an email. It's from um, Wendy H., mm. and it says, love ain't. Oh. That's where we got this from. <laughs> Uh, this is where we get it from here. Yes. Hey, family. Hope y'all doing well. Did y'all hear the tea about uh, Salim Aki, the creator? Love is girl. It's juicy. If you haven't heard the link, I seen it. Um, what it says is all I'm gonna say is it explains why the show left on a bad taste in my mouth, especially about the Nazir character. What's his name? It's Yussi. Oh. <laughs> 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 Thanks, love y'all, Wendy. Windy Shady. I said, oh, this is Nazir. <laughs> y'all see, it was funny. I we can go back and listen to other episodes, and I told y'all he was a fuck nigga. <laughs> and I said, young and old, because a lot of y'all was like, oh, Nayams, he's young. First of all, he's in his clean thirties, right? Was, okay, yeah. <laughs> fine. Y'all still giving these niggas slack. Y'all like, what was it, Pastor John, who talking about his wife done birthed him? <laughs> Did we ever talk about that stupid shit? No. Maybe next week because it's stupid. Because he a decent pastor, right? When he came on that show sweating, talking about he's so grateful his life wife birthing a grown ass man. Oh, stupid! And then if her, I'd be embarrassed. Mm-hmm. This thick ass mm-hmm. baby here. Um, but yeah, um, Yazir was on young and old Yazir. Because remember at the end of the episode, he got up and he was in his damn near fifty five and grabbed his backpack. Cause he, cause she kept that damn ring. Oh please! What a ring got? Oh please! What a ring got, Nuri? Please. What a ring got, Mar- uh, Mara? I'm with Wendy. He a fuck nigga. And the writings was on the walls. We was just all so wrapped up in you know this episode. But the people, when people show you who they are, what? He already done had, and I'm sure Sis gonna use that in court. The episode when he cussed out his baby mama. Uh huh. All that's gonna be in court, honey. <laughs> Okay. They using this shit like it's for real. For... <laughs> if I was a lawyer, I would. Look, this character is based off me. Yeah. <laughs> See how he cussed her out in this TV show? That's exactly what he did. That's to what me. he did to me. To me. Child, come on, you reading that's for me? Uh, I can read it. It says thank you in the update of sorts. He says, "LOL." Uh, I just want to say thank you both for your advice. I really appreciate it. Uh, I checked in with one of my friends jokingly. <laughs> Uh, and they all confirmed that my son isn't bad. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Just checking. Because that will do it. <laughs> if you ever met him, he'll put you in mind of Papa from the show. Uh, let's go to the show. Yes, He's an I old love soul. Um, but, I probably sh- <laughs> but I should probably stop listening to the podcast on my way to drop him off at school. Uh-huh. He called a kid a crafty colonizer. <gasps> no! <laughs> oh, shit. No! He called a kid a crafty colonizer. Kinda, I needed to be his teacher. <laughs> I'm like, what did you say, baby? And asked the school, <laughs> asked if the school play was about white, white privilege pr- because of the lack of diversity he feels it has. <laughs> I don't see no <laughs> lie, honey. <laughs> Look, I'm the bad aunt. I'm confused. Like I'm the I'm the right. aunt. I'm the mom when I go to principal office. I'm confused. What's the problem? What <laughs> is this? <laughs> okay, we'll cut it down for the baby. <laughs> we'll cut it back for the baby. What you mean? You call him a crafty colonizer? I'm just glad he ain't said other words. Um, it could have been worse. It could have been. Oh, but God! <laughs> See how I'm trying to get you media train? <laughs> but God came down, <laughs> and touched uh, his mind and his lips. I'm definitely going to ask my boyfriend's mother uh, out for yeah, some good old. Yeah, ask for better cheddar bays. That's what she said for some good old old uh, soul food, uh, <laughs> seafood <laughs> feast. People's see, tone change when they got that food in their mouth. Let's see if we can talk things out. Let's As talk. for my boyfriend, yeah, uh, he well, he thinks this is all a figment of my imagination. Mm, take and note. And I should just relax. Take note. Uh, love is ever evolving, so I'm going to work uh, through this mm-hmm. uh, and do some unpacking yeah. uh, to get to the source. Yeah, like, I think we still got some time to unpack. Yeah. Like, I don't think you in danger, right? I, I, like, if you was in danger, girl, because there's some disrespectful stuff the mama could say. I'm like, oh, sis, right. get up out of there, right? She started talking crazy about your son. Like, time to get up out of there. Call it quits. 
to that nigga good, break up that nigga on a post-it note, like be done, right? But I think we still can work through it, right? I think we're early enough to still work through what it. What did you do when the teacher or the principal called <laughs> and said, uh, <laughs> little Johnny? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, let's play it out. <laughs> ba-ding, ba-ding. Hello? Hi. Hi, Hello? how are you? Yes. Hey, how you doing? I just want to um talk to you for some se- for a second. Oh, yes, yes. How can I help? Um, This is my white boy face. Tyrell. Oh, huh? Yes, my baby. Called the student a crafty colonizer today. Oh, were they doing crafts in class? No. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I would be quiet on the phone. I like this. Hello? Yeah, no, look. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I'd be just like the Bernie Mac episode. <laughs> oh, when baby girl was said cussing? nigga. No, no remember she, she said, said nigga. <laughs> Did she say nigga or she just was cussing? I think it was both. She was saying something. You, I think she said like you dirty motherfucking nigga. Yeah. And, and then Bernie Mac, I want to watch that tonight. He was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be the worst when they use it in the right context. Right. He was like, oh my God. Look. And he just put his hand to my, he said, where'd she learn that from? Right. Then they flash back to him. Yeah. The dirty motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, we so sorry, baby. Auntie Niram and Nyambi, don't do what we be doing. You got plenty of time to live this no, life. No, I, I, don't need be to get, I need more details. Was he bullying your son? Is that the reason why he <laughs> called him crafty colonizer? Niram want to come up to the school. You know, <laughs> I got to fight for this child. Niram want to come up I got to fight school. for this young king. What did the white student do for in order for him to call him crafty right, colonizer? Niram, was they? That's your answer. Yes. Was they was being they a crafty, crafty colonizer? colonizer? Did he do something? He, that was crafty like. Right. You know, you know colonizers are gonna colonize. Right. Did he go to the teacher and say, Hey, you know, white Johnny over here fucking Did with you me? Say white Johnny. And <laughs> and the teacher was like, White Johnny did you do something? And he's like, Uh uh-uh, uh, I didn't do nothing. He was. Tyrell over here on that bullshit. Yeah. And then he's like crafty <laughs> colonizer <laughs> under his voice. And the teacher's like, What you say, nigga boy? <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> These are this crafty colonizers. The same way we be at work right. when we be in meetings. Crafty ass. And Barbara colonizer. say something crazy. Oh, crafty ass Barbara. So I can't fault. I need more details. Yeah, support them. I, I need more details. We have to start a for this baby to get private school. Exactly. Oh my God! And then the white privilege play. And the white, that's another thing. You know what? We better be careful. Was with it manifest. Columbus Day? Oh my God. Was it a Columbus Day play? Was it a Thanksgiving because Day play? Because that is about raping and pill- pillaging. pillaging. It is. It is. So it is. I, I can't oh fault them. Oh, my God. Which holiday was it? These kids are so smart. Was it Thanksgiving? Yeah, these kids are so smart. All right. These We sorry. We're going to try to cut it back. Okay. You're going to go ahead and read the next one? Yeah, so the next one is from Josephine. The subject is pick, uh, pick me up culture. It says, hey, what's up, y'all? Um, what do y'all think about this? She linked something. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't put I didn't I didn't watch it on YouTube. It was like a YouTube video. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll link it in our Twitter or Instagram, and we'll watch it too. It says I'm not sure what to say. On one hand, I get it, and there's a ridiculous amount of pressure on women. But on the other hand, I feel like they're playing right into the stereotype of black women and why men don't want to marry us. Not me. I'm married. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Let them know, sis. <laughs> I am the exception, not the rule. Um, but I have to be honest. I cook his food, wash his clothes, fix his plate type, though. Not because I'm scared he'll leave me um, if if I don't, because that's not who I, I was raised to be. This is the type of woman I chose to be as I got older. Anyway, I'm curious to hear what y'all think of this. We got to oh. look at the YouTube video. Actually, you don't even need to watch. The, I, I think I watched it for a second. All you need to see is the first 30 seconds. You'll get it. Okay. Like, I don't think it's not wrong if you type of woman who like to do that, right? I think the biggest thing for me is just choice, mm-hmm. right? Like, you do it because you want to, not because he said you yeah, need to do it. No, pick me. Pick me. I'm the one. I bake his plate. I wash his clothes. I roll over every time he taps me on my shoulder. You may oh. have noticed a growing trend on social media. What the hell and we that? are talking about pick me culture. I'm Shamika Sanders, and these are my co-hosts, Kiara Kelly and Africa Miranda. Pull up a chair because you are watching Listen to Black Women. What is this? Oh, Madam Neil? Are they finally pushing some content, huh? 
The term pick me has been floating around social media for some time now. I never but heard it got that. a little exacerbated when Love and Hip Hop Miami star Amara La Negra posted a performative post on Instagram cleaning her man's bathroom. She was in like a Fashion Nova dress. Uh-huh. And it sparked a whole bunch of backlash and a bunch of women talking about pick me culture. Yeah. You may be asking yourself, what is pick me culture? Well, Sonia Eskridge wrote in a MadameNoir.com article a pick me is motivation for shaming of the women is men everything Uh. they do is centered around catching a man all of which leads us to our question of the week how do we stop perpetuating pick me culture ladies i think it's ah what say you about i mean you put me on a spot we might have to come back to this monday but i don't know if i necessarily believe it's such thing as a pit like because i don't i don't i'm not concerned with what other hoes is oh I don't, I'm not concerned. Right? Mm-hmm. This seems like a low self-esteem problem. It is. Right? So if you worried about... Which way, Nam? I don't know if we in agreement or not. I don't know. I, I think you can be both ways because I think you... Um, if, I'm, if, if the bitch wants to clean his fucking bathroom in Fashion Nova's best in Pine Saw, by all means. Nyambi's not. But if you would like to do it, fine. And if the nigga want that, that's better he with you because I'm not doing it. No, I'm mean, don't even if I can clean the floor. I don't vacuum. So and I don't a, take out the fucking trash. She's not about picking nothing. If anything, I might be a pick me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I don't know if I'm the most appropriate to say. Like, sis, if that brings you joy, right? I have friends who love being like um very maternal and like they love their home and like mm-hmm. like they they love that type of stuff. But I think they're talking about bitches who faking it. But what's gonna happen is the bitches who faking it, you only can fake it so long. But I think the thing is, you know, like going through like the video, yeah. um, is that it's it's double sided because now you got the people. It's like, oh, you know, y'all y'all women, that's all y'all do is satisfy men, and that's the reason why y'all ain't got a man. And then you got people. It's like, well, I suck his dick, and oh. I keep my ass right, and that's why I keep I got a man. And he, and, and, and you don't. y'all bitches who don't suck no dick. And oh, keep y'all because ass that right. had also the dialogue. Yeah, got you. Yeah, and the dialogue's not appropriate because it's all about picking me, right? Got you. Mm-hmm. So the dial, so it's not necessarily the actions, yeah. but it's the it's toxic femininity. Well, actually, against that y'all. is that mm-hmm. is toxic, right? Mm-hmm. That is toxic because either it should be no right way. Mm-hmm. Um, a relationship should be individual. Yeah, mm, that's interesting. I want to think about that more. I'm yeah. it. I'm, I'm a it's an eight episode. minute video, but you can watch it. Yeah, I'll unpack it more next episode. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I never really cared about like I, that stuff. Whenever I see women do that, they really don't. That never caught my attention. That's why I was like, what is the pick me culture? Mm-hmm. But yeah, you don't then be like, well, bitch, that's why you don't got no men because you don't know how to use no pine saw. Like, what's this? <laughs> what? You don't know me. Right. I hire me, right? Mm. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, the subject, the next one says, good morning, Nirm and Nyambi. First, I want to tell you congrats on your 200th episode. So many people may not understand what a great accomplishment this is, but it truly takes hard work, dedication to put a show on like that three days out of a week. Great job, and please continue. Comments. Korean baby, dead. Uh-oh, where we at? <laughs> <laughs> um, thought he was slick and didn't know who he was dealing with, but he said but he said that he is already thinking about skin color at such an early age. Hopefully the conversation with you stays with him as he interacts with other cultures. He did try. Like, mm-hmm. He ain't no, nor his mama, but right. he, I consider him still a brown baby, so he need help. Mm-hmm. Green leaf. Green leaf. What took y'all so long? I completely agree with you guys said, but Jacob needs to grow the heck up. He literally told his wife, I need, I really, I really love, um, bro, you had to think, did I say that right? Yeah, oh, that he literally told his wife, I really love, um, but bro, you had to think about um, that or you didn't know this the whole time. Makes sense since he's been cheating on her on and off during a relationship. Yeah, I don't even know if Jacob and Clarissa was her name Clarissa? Because we yeah. had to finish season. I don't think they need to necessarily be together. Mm-mm. I'm not sure, right? Like I think they co-parent. Well, okay, you know, because what's her name? Crazy. Zora, Zora just crazy. I don't care who the parents They just is. need to send her ass to fucking boot camp. Yeah, Zora. But they maybe should just co-parent. But Grandma may... When well, May that last told episode, her, when May told her ass, oh, you got that concert ticket, but guess what? You on punishment, ho. Oh. So you can't go. You can't go. <laughs> that was some classic black mama <laughs> shit there. She said, oh, that's so horrible. You, <laughs> you won't be go. able to go. Her and the parents look sad. Right. Because Clarissa was like, come on. 
And she said, "Oh, she on punishment." Honey. She on punishment. She don't. She don't go. She nowhere. don't go. She have no fun. She she gonna eat these honey buns for breakfast and go on by her business <laughs> and have Bible study three times a week. Yeah. <laughs> At six a.m. <laughs> oh, and I love the Lord, but six a.m. Mother May, six a.m. <laughs> Next, this is us. As a young woman who doesn't have the best relationship with her mother, aunties come through for the win. They can be your confidants and best friends with um, with some sense since they've been through it already. Also, did you catch that Beth's cousin was molested by her father in last time? So I missed that. I keep I, I think I was talking or maybe left the room because mm-hmm. I know in the previews they was like, find out what happened to so and so. And I didn't never find out. Did she was she molested? I don't know. Something had to happen, right? That's drastic for your cousin mm-hmm. to kind of come live with you and not live with you, right? Because I, I get it like sometimes, you know, your parents are sending you to live with someone, right? Maybe if money ain't where it needs mm-hmm. to be, they between housing, right, and they trying to get themselves together with a right. job. But I don't know if they just come live with you for the rest of the yeah. their life and the parent like Someone yeah. match it. I figured it was something serious. Like we didn't that. catch it because Niam was talking. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and peek. Or she, that. I was trying to figure out why she broke my phone. Uh, yeah, that, I'm gonna have to go back and peek through that. But I figured it was something, right? Because at first, when she said, "Oh, I, this is my cousin," she lived with me. You know, sometimes you know, if I even have mm-hmm. cousins like that, sometimes they'll stay with you a summer or a year or like if you're in a better school district, right? You know, you pull that type of shit, mm-hmm. right? That's what I thought it was initially, but it wasn't. Um, and it says that's about um, it. Always enjoy listening to you guys, and I think you should create a special Niambi segment where she just gives the rundown of all the shows with her commentary. Hilarious! Have a great weekend. <laughs> we were trying to get better. I know who's doing too many spoilers. Mm-hmm. You got the next one there. Yeah. So this is from Elena. Elena. Oh. Oh Elena. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on. Uh, she says I meet up. Hey there, uh, hey there, friends. A lot of idea of a trip. Uh, with the Black Love family, let's do it. Yes. Um, with all these streams, uh, we will have a wonderful international, um, you dig? Yes. Looking forward to it. Yeah, that would be nice. Right? Like I said, we never do nothing else, but just like at the end, be like, this is where we all going to meet and we going to mm-hmm. do this. Perfect. You yeah. The next one is from Candace. The subject says, Nirma Ni- I mean, the message says, Nirma Ni- 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 Sis bro, cuz, what happened to the phrase anyway? Oh, yeah, we don't say sis bro, cuz that much. Um, y'all ain't said that in a while. You mad at your cousins and them? <laughs> no, they probably mad at me. Mm. Did I? I don't know. Did I mention what happened at my grandfather's funeral? One of my did I talk about that on the podcast? No, I think I, I think promised so. I would. It. <laughs> mm. I, oh. I can't because <laughs> oh, okay. I know my mama looks. <laughs> <laughs> you know your mama and your daddy listening. So. <laughs> You can go down that route if you want to. So, yes, I'm a little mad, but I'm going to bring it back. Mm-hmm. Um, I digress. The storyline of Rocky and his son got a gap in it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. His son went... Because I, I was confused. I didn't know what happened. Dude, you say he went away. I said, yeah. where he go, Neil? I don't know. I just said he went away. <laughs> his son went off to college and ended up working in a suit and tie environment. He didn't like... Um, it, he, he didn't like and showed up at... Uh, showed up in Balboa. That's the oh, he was in Balboa. That's the movie. Rocky old ass got back in the ring <laughs> to prove something to himself and was lucky enough not to die. <laughs> 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 um, his punch, his punch drunk ass did have a stroke. Did he have a stroke? No, um, no when to say when. Jesus, as I said, that's someone right with Sylvester Sly, but he showed up um and was in Rocky's corner for his fight. So the last we saw him. Um, they were good. I don't know what happened before Creed one and Creed two, because I was like, well, why is he so concerned with his son? Right. And because I guess I never assumed he had a bad relationship with his son until mm-hmm. he brought it up. I just assume his son ain't gonna his son at work, right? Like his mm-hmm. son is gonna be what in his thirties, maybe forties. Yeah. So between nine and five p.m. when they're at the boxing ring, I just assume his son at work. I need to go back and see Rocky Bad Boy to see if that's White Daddy still. Is that White Daddy? I, I mean, don't you know. can just check the credits. I know. I need to see. I do remember about. I don't think I seen. Actually, I have seen all of them. Yes, because I made you watch them. We watched Rock. How many is them? We watched Rocky one, S- seven, one, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. When did it start? Just going to Balboa. I don't know. And I then I watched thought. Creed. Well, I started with Creed one. Was my first Rocky movie. Yeah, because you was like, I don't understand any of this, <laughs> and it's like this is all callbacks <laughs> to like yeah, all the Rockies. Yeah, because we went to go see Creed, and near I'm assuming I'm like, who is? I said, who is um, Apollo? You're almost like what? Like his I said, why is, I said, why he find this black boy? Why is black boy obsessed with him? Is he a fan? Mirror had to explain everything with me. And I was like, oh, I got you. 
uh, and then it said, oh, hell no, we don't miss Desi. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we don't miss Desi. Don't nobody miss Desi but you. It's just your shame. <laughs> Clearly, I'm writing this email while listening. Now, I mean, you knew damn well you wasn't ready for no dog. Don't you go get no dog and then have them out there uh, in that damn soot and smog. <laughs> he on the porch. <laughs> Okay, back to Rocky and Creed too. I enjoyed it for the growth of men and their personal journeys and it's not and their non emotional selves. <laughs> they were a little non emotional. Because I figured like they've been through a lot. Like mm-hmm. um well, Adonis lost his daddy, Creed. I mean not Creed, um Adonis lost his father. Mm-hmm. That was Rocky's, I'm assuming really, really yeah, close best friend. friend. Was right? Like, best like that's something to get upset about, right? And they really weren't showing it, but anywho. But secretly over emotional and melodramatic sales, they were and like, and they would like be with each other and not show emotion. Then they'd go in the corner and cry. It's like, well, why didn't y'all just support each other through this? Both of y'all mm-hmm. feeling hurt. Meanwhile, on the ranch, Felicia was shot holding it all together in that beautiful mansion. Um, but them shit ain't stop, huh? Mm-hmm. Them Apollo creatures. Um, wasting all this damn time because you're afraid of emotional letdowns and pain, but you run towards physical pain. Mm, come on, hurt so good. Men are something else. Rocky missed his grandson's formidable years because he was afraid his son would turn him away. Nothing beats a failure um, but but a try. This is coming from a personal space because my father and grandfather aren't speaking to each other right now. And it's pissed me off um, over my Thanksgiving holiday. They live less than 10 miles apart. Originally New Yorkers who both retired in Florida and the reason they aren't talking is pretty fucked. Uh, it's petty as fuck, and I'm sick of it. I went down um, there speaking my mind and gave less than two shits because I'm grown and have a functional vehicle and can leave and ask to drive myself home. <laughs> you a fully realized yeah. woman. <laughs> Life too damn short. My daughter's grandmother passed Friday morning. Oh, no. And Sorry my grandfather had met her when um, my 10-year-old was born. He said, oh, she was my age. Mm. And I'm livid. And hurt inside. Exactly, Grandpa. She was your age and your son is down the damn road and y'all don't speak. I, w- I went to breakfast with my father and drove um, and drove and after eating almost drove him to my grandfather's to tell him to get out the car and go in. But I didn't want to push him too far. Child, they make you. You be like, get. Get your ass out there. Right. And the thing is, they don't got to be the best of friends or the mm. ideal, you know, the stereotypical ideal what it's supposed to be. But shit, go look each other in the eye. All right, go say something. Anyway, um, but I'm mad that I did it now because I'm um, obnoxious when it comes to fits in my family. Enough secrets and pettiness. Air it out and move forward. What was my father going to do? Stop talking to me because I tried to force him to fit thing with his own father. I was an, I was an emotional and frustrated. It was an emotional and frustrating holiday. Any words of wisdom, support, and encouragement for the fam? Peace, love, and pro-back everything. And I have to rewind the podcast because y'all talking about Greenleaf and I missed all of it. Sending this email and didn't press pause. Deep as hell. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're on the right track, sis, right? Mm-hmm. Like. I hate that. Like, even my family's kind of going through something now where, uh, like, my mother and she's not talking to certain people. And I'm just like, who cares? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, they wrong. And I think that's the hard part to get by, right? Like, how do you get to the point where you be like, yes, that person is wrong. Yeah. But love them through it. And when I mean love them through it, right, I'm not saying put yourself at risk for hurt or pain or defeat, right? But it's something about, like, loving folks in spite of it and setting those boundaries and expectations like i ain't saying going over every day and doing stuff but it's something about being able to have a clear conscience so even if they do fuck up you should love them enough to be like you know what you really pissed me off when you fucked up on x y and z come get a piece of ham everybody can't be like you baby why not because grudges are everything. like you know what i'm saying like can't i'm you not see saying... that motherfucker and that rage from seeing them from holding that grudge just fill you up inside yeah that's the part that you gotta let go though like i'm not saying that they're perfect like i'm not saying what they did was right like and of course i'm not talking about if you're talking about hurting something i'm not saying give them money i'm not saying let them in your house right but as far as just saying your peace and then moving on and loving them through that that's what it's about mm-hmm. period not cutting them out i don't ever want to see you again like it's just one life yeah and you said what do you say what you talking about them grudges on there? You you know more about that than me. I'm not a good gr- grudge holder. Yeah, them grudges fill you up inside. I think the longest I held a grudge was six months. Oh. What about you now? Mm. You still going? Yeah. About oh. 25 years. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we won't unpack that. You trying to be shady? You saying I done held a grudge longer than six months? Yes. What? what? 
Um, some people from your high school. <laughs> oh, that ain't a grudge. I said the difference is I said my piece. No, y'all be cut them holes off. I cut it off and I said my piece and I kept moving. That's the difference, though. You can cut like you can be distant, but it ain't like the door is open. Everybody still got my number. I ain't. I when you call, I'll still answer. But I need you to know why I'm upset. Anywho. Miami got them holes on. What's the next? You reading the next one or I am? Uh, this is from uh, Xavier. Here. And it says, what do I do? Oh, we got a lot of questions. We're going to have to like add, because I know it was another one we didn't read was questions. Yeah. We're going to have to like, put this up for next week. Let me say, I'm 35 and my only child is a junior. Uh-huh. I'm assuming a junior in high school. Yeah. I'm convinced her to uh, get into cosmetology uh, at school, but she's looking at three HBCU. So at 37, I'll be an empty nester. I uh-huh. want to leave Indiana. Um... But would I be crowding the kid if I move three hours uh, away from her school? Or should I go back to school? Lord, give me some steps. Child, that ch- let that child go to school and do what the fuck they want. Mm-hmm. I should say that. No. Don't let them go to school and do whatever the fuck they want. Yes, do. D- Why are you saying? No, mm-hmm. no. Like, give guidance. Like, I think as a parent, like, help them figure out what they want to do. Right? So, they want to do the... Co- so, do you want to go to cosmetology school or do the child want to go? Mm-hmm. Do you know which one there? No, just say I convinced oh, her to get into cosmetology. But we still looking at age. Honestly, that wouldn't be a bad hustle for both. Mm-hmm. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, having cosmetology fall back and still getting your degree, right? If you focus on, like, business, administration, like, that kind of tied together to me, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what's going to happen is make sure that your child is committed and dedicated. And you know your child better than anyone to know how mm-hmm. dedicated they are, right? Do do they need to go ahead and start in, like, school and HBCU? And is that what they need to be successful? Or do you mm-hmm. think they need more of a trade where they can quickly make more money and kind of go to school and have that life, right? Those are two different routes that I think you can get to the same goal. It's just which way you want to go. And to answer your question, I don't think you're crowding your kid no. if you move three hours away from them. No. No, because the thing is, they ass ain't going to be, first I'm of all, saying, yeah. if they ain't got no car, your ass ain't going to be wanting to drive. I mean, they might as a new parent, mm-hmm. because what's going to happen? Your kid's going to call you during that first semester with them first this week, and they're going to be crying their eyes out. Mm-hmm. And they're going to probably ask to come home. Yeah. And you have to be strong and say no. Say no. Stay your ass there and make some Give friends. it one semester, right? I always say give it a semester, and we'll reevaluate at the end of the semester. Mm-hmm. So that might be hard for you. It ain't going to be your kid, right? It's going to be you have to restrain yourself. Right. But no, go ahead and live with three hours in school. And should I go back to school? Shit, yeah, if you yeah, want to. Shit. Do what the fuck. You are 30, what? 37. 35. Yeah, about to be 37 when uh, when the kid is out of school. That's young. You can have a whole different kid right. in life. <laughs> you can have a new kid. kid. And life. You start a whole, you start <laughs> over. You start at zero. <laughs> <laughs> when you bored with this one, start over. <laughs> Yeah, so if you want to go to school, take your ass to school. Hell, why is you waiting until your kid go to school? All right, start now. Start now. Yes, <laughs> live your life. Absolutely, and I give your kid. That's shutting a good example for your child, right? Mm-hmm. They need to get those they shit together. Yes, go to school, move, live your best life, change your career. Yes, 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 and yes. Between the ages of thirty five and thirty seven, do it all. You still got a lot of room to be fucking up shit. Exactly. Yes, that's my advice. Mm. Okay. You can read the next one. The what's one's from Nancy, and it says the subject is Netflix. It says, "Hey, Niram and Nyambi, hope y'all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. That gumbo Nyambi was cooking looked delicious. Oh, you was on the um, what's it called, the Instagram yeah. live? Yeah, yeah, uh, Insta snaps. Um, since oh, it's called that. No, I just made it up. Oh, okay. Since it's Thanksgiving weekend, and I have had a couple days off, I binge watched a couple shows and watched some of Netflix. Nyambi, I know you're into Lifetime movies, and you know Lifetime movies never, uh, never." POC? Person of color. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. I was mm. just, uh, I was thinking of a point of contact. I don't know mm. why. Um, person of color, unless they're the token or best friend. But I found one. Woo! It's called To Death Do Us Part. It has all the elements that make a good, great Lifetime movie. Yes, I highly recommend it. Niram, I got a show for you, too. It's called The Confession Tapes. It's similar to Making a Murderer. I have an idea for the 200 episode. A live stream on YouTube or Periscope. Oh, y'all can keep a secret identity <laughs> I don't want y'all to think we Beyonce and Jay-Z. That is not what we're trying to do. <laughs> Identity Safe, only showing the Black Love Matters logo. Thank you for making such an amazing podcast. Thank you. Oh, a live stream will be funny. Right? Mm-hmm. Just take questions and stuff. The thing is, now we're on the West Coast. But I don't know where the majority of our listeners are. I guess we can just adjust the timing yeah, and no just mind. do it earlier yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm going to check those out. Um, to death, do us part. I might actually check that out this weekend. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and Niram, you watched some confession tapes over the holiday. Niram, are you ready to start your um, roots? Yes. Do you did roots make it to Colonizer Valley? It surely did. <laughs> what date? You starting December first? Yes. That's soon. It is. Oh Jesus! For y'all don't know, what's the tradition there? I watch Roots all throughout the uh, December. Yeah, I know Roots, Christmas. the twelve-hour show. And if he finishes, what does he do? I'll rewatch it again. Oh all for December, just like you play Christmas music. I watch Roots because I never want to forget how the white man treated us. Oh my god! The next one is from um, Willanisha. Um, M and it says counting down to episode 200 it says hey y'all I just had to share this funny story I was driving around with my son in the car him and I were conver- conversing about tech companies I said to him you know the people I listen to on the podcast work for a tech company out in California my son immediately responds who Nyambi <laughs> <laughs> I almost crashed I basically burst out laughing I was like how do you know which one he said I don't know I guess too funny Nyambi the house you visited with your friend, I think the lady was schizophrenic. Near awesome job on the race. You're inspiring me. I see you doing big things. Nayambi, I love how you say glid it, glide it. Well, you did glid it down that wall. <laughs> I listened to the episode over and over just to hear you say it. Uh, Nayambi, I can't wait for you to write um, a book on how to deal with colonizers in corporate America. Have an awesome um, Thanksgiving. <laughs> she said, who Nayambi? Who Nayambi? <laughs> She's like, wait a minute. We out here raising kids. <laughs> That's what I said. We got to do better. The thing is, y'all, we don't got the children, right? So we don't got to censor ourselves. You know, and I don't think when I have kids, I'm a overly censor myself. But I do think it's age appropriate no. stuff. They need to know. Yo, mama ain't censored. No, damn my thing. mother and my family didn't censor us at all. But that's why I knew too much. <laughs> too grown. Too, too grown. Right, so I'm gonna try to do better because I know sometimes y'all be in the morning, y'all had the children, and it's ways for us to say what we mean. And the children don't got to know because I know they listening. But your son I know they listening. Calling that student a crafty colonizer. Nearum is tickled. I am tickled. Nearum about to send him a Christmas gift. And yes. <laughs> it's his ass a Christmas, Christmas ornament, a card or something <laughs> from your favorite people. I think he's saying it because I'm sure that's going to happen. I'm sure we're going to be called in the principal offices on some bullshit. Yes, especially from your mouth. Shit. Yeah, I know. The shit that come out of your mouth is. I know. Ridiculous. Sometimes. I know, and I'm growing. I'm hopefully, you know, kids in a few more years, I'll be a little more mature, and mm. I don't know. I have a little more discretion when it comes to my disdain. Mm. What's the next one? Chad loves my shit. Mm. Where's it gonna go? Um, this is from um Nerla, and this is subject. Chad loves Michelle. Hey cousin, so I just started watching Chad loves Michelle. Oh, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Michelle is a ghost of her former self. What? <laughs> <laughs> You I know don't what? even know what that means. I know exactly what the fuck it means. <laughs> and the thing is, you know, because I like Michelle. I like, I, first of all, I like Beyonce. And I like Destiny's Child. And I mm-hmm. like Michelle, right? Even when she was kind of coming in, doing the gospel, and she mm-hmm. did that trio with Shirley Caesar, and y'all drug her to the ground and said, ma'am, don't stand that circle. Like, I still ain't like this. Is Michelle the one that's always messing up? Yeah. On like, like she can't dance? She can dance. It's just when you standing next to Beyonce. It's one of them, like. It's they, her, yeah. They did like a, a a YouTube montage of like she like falling yeah. or like missing the steps. It was like somebody. Yeah, is, I it, just, is it Kelly or Michelle? No, Michelle? no, no. Kelly pretty good. Uh, so it's, it's Michelle. Michelle. So it's like a montage <laughs> of Michelle falling, falling, I, messing up, messing up dance routines, and like Beyonce giving her ass side eyes, just looking the whole while, time, like performing. I never forget on One on Sister Park when they came on dancing and she fell, and I feel like Beyonce stepped over her. I said, "Damn." <laughs> Beyonce said, guess what I'm not going to do? Stop performing. That's why she's the superstar. Yeah. Because Beyonce didn't fail a few times and got the oh fuck Oh, my God. Out. Do y'all remember when Beyonce fell down three, what was it? Quincy down five flight of stairs and didn't miss a, a beat? She got back out and started twerking She didn't on, on miss beat. a beat nor miss a lyric. Because if I would have failed, I had to stop the show. I like turn up the lights. Wasn't even breathing hard or nothing. I would have been scared and sweating. I'd like turn the lights up. Let alone now I'm be trip over air. <laughs> and I gotta recover. <laughs> I gotta recover. I'm <laughs> Michelle. I'm the Michelle of the group. Honey. I don't fail. And I'm still on the ground. I'm, I'm at the age when I fall, I sit on the ground and evaluate if I get up. <laughs> you know, when you're younger, you just get up quick. Now mm-hmm. I gotta evaluate to see what's going on. <laughs> Um, but anyway, she said she a ghost of her former self. She need therapy, not matrimony. Now that's a plus. I agree. Um, getting married won't fix her. 
air quote, this white pastor tried to pass light for light skin is trash. And I don't know why she's settling for him. Can't wait to get y'all on the show. Blessings. Yeah. I start hearing more and more because I was going to watch it. And I was like, child, I honestly, y'all know how we do. Like, sometimes we don't talk about stuff because it's so bad. <laughs> and I think that might fall in the category. Yeah. I think we watched a half episode now. I don't remember you watching it. Oh, maybe you didn't. I did. And I was just like, because what I think what really turned me off and when I found out that man was white, <laughs> I felt betrayed. And it's not that she's married a white man. Fine, right? Mm -hmm. But he, what was the, we just talked about the Instagram girls that's trying to black. Uh, um, what is it called? Black something? They trying to come off. Like, I feel like he definitely tried to come off mm -hmm. as he was black. That's how I felt. Mm. And he supposed to be a pastor on top of this. Like, that cup. Hmm, it was just way too many red flags. And I haven't seen any snippets or anything where he's like had a come to Jesus moment when he's apologized, mm. right? Where he's addressed white privilege and Only, how he was. I yeah. haven't seen any of that happen that would show me, like, oh, this is growth. This is love, right? I haven't seen any of that. Only one, only clip I seen was like, um, she said something about him being white and he was like, have you took your match yet? That's the only clip I That's seen, shady, and I was like, "Oh, no, he didn't." Ding dong. He said, "Have I took my meds?" Yeah. I was like, "Oh, I ain't got to watch no more." <laughs> and the thing is, mm -mm. yeah, so I I am gonna watch it, but oh. I don't know if I'm gonna have a lot of positivity to say because I think Michelle, like, like a lot of us, right, that we don't like to admit, right? Sometimes we just want to get married, right? We want to move on to the next phase in our life, and we want to do these things, and you end up with shit like this. Mm -hmm. And he a pastor. I think that's what make it even slide. Yeah. It's a light skin pastor that was on um Cut Nephew Tommy show. Oh yeah, he was. Yeah. <laughs> was he white too? I don't know. That's why I said they look similar. He, yeah. Why do, and he look like I think he the real deal. So Michelle. Next one. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh, oh wait, this is from the same person. This subject is called Clark Sisters though. Okay. Go ahead. It says, Hey cousins, hope y'all doing well. Um Hope you're doing well near him. Uh, we love you too. You're not just a simple IT guy. Yeah, yeah he love the maintenance. Oh, yeah. That's his cancer energy. Just honey. the IT guy. Mm -hmm. It's Nyambi show. Uh, you are a great balance in Nyambi. Nyambi, I saw this. Uh, saw this on Twitter and thought about you. According to this article, a biopic <gasps> about the Clark sisters is going to uh, oh, is shit, going to be lifetime. made oh. and aired on Lifetime. Oh, uh, below be is the link. Be careful. Um, Thanks for making such a wonderful show. It's definitely part of my self-care routine. Happy Thanksgiving. Save a slice of uh, sweet potato pie for me. Um, you read this after Thanksgiving. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Okay. Yes. What? Why wasn't I on the alert that it's about to be a <laughs> lifetime? Better not mess this up. I'm going to need Koji to throw some money at that. The Koji religion. I'm going to need y'all to put some horns onto that. You know, can you link this? Oh, I guess we got to finish this show. I'm so excited. Could you imagine the soundtrack? No. <laughs> of, course of course not. not. <laughs> <laughs> my new my new Clark sister song is um Pure Gold. It's a that's one of the underrated ones, mm -hmm. but it's my new jam. Is that the one you be playing in the shower? Yes. You don't like that one, Nero? Baby, you in the shower, I don't know what you be listening to. You only can hear a little Nero didn't yes. like it because I played the Clark sisters um Pure Gold and then I followed it up with Yes Indeed. <laughs> with Drake how did it go there <laughs> so it was like this pure let me see if I can find it oh this is my new jam this is an old school I took it way back hey we are I'm gonna just give y'all a little bit of that it's real old school oh wait I want y'all to hear the pure gold I'm going to fast forward to the end where they holler and like, I like it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. I think that was Karen. Wait, wait. That's for y'all who going through y'all review season. Although you may be tried in the fire, you're going to come out as that pure gold. You keep your head up, okay? <laughs> and then Niram got mad at me. Um... When I then hit it up with the yes indeed, mm, mm, mm. then he get mad at me. He was like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "How you go from gospel?" 
I'm a complex person walking a crooked path. I love that Yes Indeed song. Look, I only play a little bit for Drake. Don't come for me. Hey. Hey. This is the one who be like, yeah, now, baby. Why, why, baby? Cry like a baby. I'm like, what the hell? And when I first heard it, I was like, what did he say? Cry like a baby. Why, why, why? Oh, my God. And I was like, nah, yeah, She's like, I love that song. So, <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck you be saying. It's the Pikachu. Can't even yeah, look at you because I'm Pikachu. Cartier frame, so I don't peek at you. Yellow Ferrari, like Pikachu. Pikachu. These slow kids <laughs> with their limited vocabulary. <laughs> these, with this limited vocabulary. All right. We got some also on the um, Black Love website. It's from D. And it says five stars come through with the review of Greenleaf. Um, spoiler, Black in season two when May's father was dying. Um, the show hinted her father did something to her sexually. Bishop James Greenleaf had me uh, worried. Patty LaBelle and Latoya Looker Walker did that this season. Yeah, yes, her father did. I did get that, like, sexually assaulted her. I definitely mm-hmm. got that. Because she even hinted that when she was talking about, like, pain. Yeah. When y- Iyanla, y- acting. She's not acting. She's just playing herself. She ain't even. She didn't have a words on the script. They just say come in. She just told. They just told her the um, the synopsis of the story. Right. And she just applied it if it was real clients. Exactly. She ain't <laughs> no damn script. She just played herself. So May is hurt, right? May does has a lot to unpack because mm-hmm. she kept saying like you don't. Because Charity was like, I don't feel hurt. I'm not safe. You know, no, Charity and, and, is you hurt. Know, and May, May was like, like, you don't know yeah. what the hell I can gave up. You don't know what unsafe feel like. You don't know. You know what I'm saying? May right, but May, you ain't had to take that away from charity like that. But Iyanla played her part. Latoya Luckett did play the shit out of that. Mm-hmm. Walking through them with them tight sh- um, dresses. She, yes. Latoya Luckett played so good on this. She made me like, like her in real life. <laughs> because what happened was, I think I was watching Greenleaf, and then I think I was cooking dinner, so we put on like T.I. and the family, Hustle family, whatever he got with Monica and all that. Yeah. And Latoya came on the TV. I said, oh, um, Rochelle. <laughs> I said, look at Rochelle. <laughs> and he was like, that is Latoya looking. <laughs> tiny better watch out for Rochelle. Rochelle. I said, Tiny better not trust Rochelle around her man. Because <laughs> Rochelle was still your man. <laughs> Always talking about the Kyla Taylor. Oh, Rick Fox, simple self. Done got distracted. Talking about, oh, Rick, is that a Taylor suit? Oh, no, this off the rack. Rick, we know you got that from Marshalls. Ain't nothing about that, say Taylor, sis. Um, and Patty LaBelle played it, too. Sure did. My favorite line with Patty LaBelle is when Lady May was talking about charity on them drugs. And she said, which one? She wish she was on them pills. What type of pills? <laughs> Man, why does it matter? It's, it's not, um, what is it, Flintstone vitamins? Like, what you- oh, shit. <laughs> they want to know. Oh, Charity. Did y'all Look. see when Charity went Incredible Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> and smashed the candy. Uh, Look, they ain't sent her black ass to jail. Oh, my God. Look, and I'm like, take her. This get dramatic. I give, want my watch. I'm gonna call it. Give me my candy. I wish you don't want Incredible Hulk. Oh, I'm gonna need some stitches <laughs> now. Listen, sis. Mm-mm-mm. But yeah, I do. I do love it too. All righty. Is that everything? Yeah, that's everything. All righty. So to submit your Black Love stories, go to blacklovematters.com. And to submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email at blacklovematters at gmail.com. And to leave a comment about anything that we talk about, talked about, you can do that on blacklovematters.com, SoundCloud, Stitcher, any form of social media. And also don't forget our voicemail at 508-784-1111. That's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. And remember, love, love is, is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace. Have a good weekend, y'all. Oh, 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 oh,